float through. All right, hold on. I guess we're recording this now. Um, I got a lost control of my screen, but I guess we'll talk about it anyways. So there's two types of agents out there. So there's an agent out there that just floats through real estate and tells everyone they're in real estate. And this is, you know, and then we take a couple of selfies in front of a house and call it real estate. And then there's actually the ones that actually get in half stuff time blocked, calling their leads, you know, converting those leads and actually going out on appointments. So, you know, don't judge anyone as like, hey, that person looks successful because they're always taking pictures on social media. Don't worry about that. It's worry about how running your business and how you're able to function and be able to become a better agent. And if you do see agents doing well, ask them, how can I be better? You know, just ask them how, they, you know, how I could be better. So we're going to break this down into two different groups. we got grow, growing business and we grow business by lead generation of buyers and sellers. Right. And that's, that's, the core concept of doing business, you know, it's, there's very few, few agents that just sit there and business just rolls in just left and right. I can name one. Uh, <laughs> she is married to a casino HR recruiter. So that just comes right in. She has to do zero uh, lead gen. It just comes right in. So that's, you know, very few cases like that that are available, but you know, it is what it is. And the lead generation, the more leads you get, the better off you are. Even if your conversion is really bad, the better the leads, the better off you are. And you got to be doing it every day. So um, do you guys know any, so this is very interactive. Do you guys know any lead generation that you could be doing right now today? Like right after this class? Anyone, anyone? Oh, you're scared. What does that mean? I hear that a lot. Call my friends and family. That is fantastic. And maybe go to coffee. Because I would that, that is fantastic. Anyone else in your sphere? Um, maybe people go to church with, people right. from my gym. Yeah, absolutely. It mm -hmm. could be that person next to you at spin class you talk to every day. I, I don't know if spin class is still going on with COVID, but you know, if it was, you could talk to them. All right. Anyone else of where you could be lead generation? Not all at once. All right. So I'll give you what I do for lead generation as well is Ah, man, I wish I wish I was live. I should, I draw this whole thing out because I have this big giant uh, thing that I actually draw. But one of the one of the things that I find great value out of for lead generation is is it cold calling? Yeah, that's actually one of them, right? Door knocking? Yeah, that's another one too. Um, is it open houses? Yeah, absolutely. Open houses are great. Uh, but one of the things is one of my key factors of what I do in my business, and you know, we'll call it the the big rock. Uh, we'll get into that later is I actually call agents from other offices outside of my general area. So I live in Las Vegas. So I'll call agents in Texas. I'll call agents in Florida. I'll call agents in Nebraska and I'll call agents in New York. And the reason being, you want to do something like that is they may have referrals for someone looking to buy or sell real estate here in Las Vegas. That's it's, it's been my bread and butter for so long. It gets harder now um, through social media, but that's why you need to make it a contact support. You got to do a lead generation. So I actually call five agents every day. And if I have, you know, if I missed a couple of calls, you know, I'll make them in between if I'm showing or not, just to make sure I reach out to somebody. And one of the benefits of it is you got to come from contribution as well. You can't just say, Hey, Hey, Melissa, I was like, do you know anyone looking to buy or sell real estate in Las Vegas? That's, you know, that's not Mike. Why are you calling me? Are you in bold? Why are you calling me? So no, you'd come across as like, Hey, Melissa. I'm like, what are you seeing in your market today? And Melissa's like, Oh, let me tell you. I'll tell you exactly what I see in my market. I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. I'm seeing that too. I'm like, all right. I was getting a little worried. Maybe I wasn't listing my house correctly. So just be able to get some kind of generation going, some lead talk in there, and then be able to say, Hey, you know what? It's like, 
now you're on top of mine and that's a lead generation for me. And also the beauty part is, especially during um, last summer and actually now is the market had got tighter, really, really tight to be able to buy a property here, especially on the buy side. And to get strategies from other agents across the US, that helped me get through the tough time. So once June hit of last year to about yesterday, it's been really, really tight, especially January to uh, last month. It was beyond tight. So 34, 40 offers right in between. And you guys are seeing the same thing up there, but just a higher price point. And um, so, yeah, so it just, what are you doing to help, you know, to create a better system for us? And that's why those phone calls and that's my big lead generation in there. So, so that's number one. And just think about it. it just your people that are currently working, you're doing two, two jobs. I did that too. I was still in IT when I got licensed. And because I was such a high level in technology is I didn't have to work on the minutia every single day. So I was able to work on my business while I was there. And I was telling all my people, I said, Hey, Hey, do you guys want to buy a house? And I'm like, I'm a real estate agent. Let's get it done. So my first sale did come from my buddy, Dave. He was my cube mate. And, uh, that was my first house. It's the first house I sold. So it's, uh, so look for business there and then look, to retain some of the customers if you're in that Porsche dealership or you're working for the VC, maybe some kind of, um, make sure you don't have an NDA or something in there, but look and see if you can get something like that. So um, to also to grow a business is to make seller listing presentation and get listings, right? So the name of the game is always listings, listing, listings. If you get listings, you'll be able to get some buyers and then be able to move that on. So today's market, you know, your listings are going to sell. You know, unless you grossly overprice it or it's just, even if it needs to be burned down, it's still going to sell. So it's, a, it is what it is in today's market. And to make a listing presentation is like, because I've been very blessed because I've looked through a lot of stuff and I had a really cool listing presentation. And the problem is we'll talk about the script part of it. And you hear that word script a lot is be able to be at the table with the seller and say, Hey, you know, this is what we do and all this stuff. And it just didn't sound right. So I have a new version of what I use that kind of uh, merges the CMA along with some of the listing presentation and it, it merges together. So it's very fluid in the way it goes and it looks really good. Um, yeah. And it's just long as you get in front of them, it is what it is. You know, you just got to close it. And we'll talk about that part too and growing it. So have anybody been on a listing presentation yet? Anyone? Kind of. Not as structured as I would have liked it to be. Right. And that's, was that your first one? Mm -hmm. yeah. What could you have done better? Practice my scripts would have been helpful. Right. I think. Um, and I don't know, just spent more time with the material. Um, Anything else? How was your, did you, did you bring a listing agreement with you? I did. Oh, that's fantastic. So, you know, I didn't do everything right in real estate when I first started. So I'd say the first five, six years. Um, yeah, probably five years. I never brought a listing present, you know, a listing agreement because I, I didn't expect them to sign then and there. Then I was watching Millionaire uh, uh, Match, was it Millionaire Listing uh, Agent, whatever that show is called, and they were like bringing the listing, uh, they're bringing the listing with them and to get it signed, a contract right then and there. And I'm like, oh, that's the, why am I not doing that? That <laughs> I should be doing that. And there's a lot of dumb things I did in life that just was really dumb, and I don't know why. Um, yeah, I actually have no idea why I didn't do these things. And they were just small things, right? And those are just, I, I just didn't get it, you know? And like early in life too, is like, I didn't take professional photos. Um, I had, a, I bought a really nice camera, it's like two grand. I'm like, I, I know how to use it, take pictures. I'm like, yeah. Then I'm like, no, why am I doing stuff that I shouldn't be doing? I should be hiring that stuff out, especially when it's, you know, cost effective and it's a better product. So anyone else been on a listing? No, thought about a listing. Who wants a listing? Not all at once. Don't scream at me. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, 
in today's market, you know, anyone could sell a house in today's market because the inventory is so low and then the buyer demand is so high, but you still should really hone in on your skills right now. And the reason being is let's say five years from now, let's say that interest rate goes to 6%. I'm not saying that it will, but I'm just saying if it changes the market shifts, you have to make sure you're on top of your game, you know, because a to get the listing that's going to be you know not the easy part but that's going to be part of the process but selling a house you got to make sure you do all the steps and i can give you a prime example of my friend she's in an area where the market has shifted a little bit before all that she did was put it in the mls and it sold easy money put it in the mls sell right easy money but now i had moved a little bit and you know, she's like, I'm struggling. It's day 14 and I don't have any offers on this house. I said, did you price it right? Right. Cause pricing is always available. And she's like, I, yeah, it's comped. And I'm like, all right, have you done any of the reverse prospecting? Have you done any circle prospecting? I was like, what are those? I'm like, those are things you need to do to get that house sold. And I'll tell you exactly how, you know, I, I do my own house is like when we list a property in our MLS within five to 15 minutes, We'll get a list of every single agent that has a buyer that has that search criteria for our house. And we'll get, we have their phone numbers too. So we'll reach out to them and say, Hey, John, I was like, it looks like your client has a house for 123 Main Street. I was like, I would like to invite you for a showing. When can I get you in? Today at three or tomorrow at four? You know, be able to get, be proactive on that kind of stuff. And that's going to help you out in today's market. We're not seeing that. So if you're new today, you'll probably fall into that trap where the market's really good. You're going to need to hone in your skills, hone in your skills with the scripts, and you're going to have to hone in your skills and be able to bring your presentation. And it's just, you're going to have to do that because the market changes. You're going to be stuck out there. I'm like, I can't sell a house and it doesn't look good. All right. So it just doesn't look good. So anybody have any questions, concerns of what I just said on that part? I like feedback. Because it tells me, I'm like, did these people go to sleep? Or they're like, wow, that's some good stuff. All right. I'll take your silence as good stuff. <laughs> How do you get the list to call people on the MLS? So our MLS is different because I'm in Vegas. So we're using Matrix. So inside of Matrix, we have this thing called reverse prospecting. So I ask your MLS if they have something called a reverse prospecting. And if they don't, you should probably have all your people get together and say, hey, we want this because these people have it. People in Houston have it. We have it. People in Oklahoma have it. And before the market really changed in, uh, let's call it January of, uh, I guess, June of last year, um, beforehand, we had to do that. We didn't just list a house and it was sold in a day. You know, we had to go in there and I'm like, list a house. And I'm like, all right just start calling people. And what I did with my own personal property is I got the list, the 400 people looking to buy my house. I went down the line, just called and text, called and text every single one until somebody came by and bought it. And you need to do that with every single listing that you have if you get to that point, right? So, and then another thing too, is like you get a hot listing. I'm like, all right, cool. Here's another cool thing you could do with that is, all right, I list my house, you know, for $4 million. I have to use a big number because you guys live over there. So it's $4 million and it's sitting there. Nobody's coming. You have to know agents in the area. So it's, it's like, if you don't know any agents in the area, first, you got to let your office know. I'm like, hey, I got this listing or I got this listing coming up. Let everybody know, hey, this is good. It's like, who wants it? And then from there is you call all your agent friends. You need to make friends with your agents in the area, right? Just to make sure that, hey, there's something that could be up. Or if you're offering on something, maybe they say, hey, uh, you know, we need this. So something like that. And shoot out a message to them and say, hey, I got this listing that's coming up, $4 million. It's coming to market or it's already on the market. And then another cool thing what you could do is, so let's call it uh, Los Gatos, right? So you have a listing in Los Gatos. And then I'm like, all right. I'm like, I don't really work that area, but my friend wanted me to list it. And I listed there anyway. So I listed it there. What you could do is go in the MLS and then you can see all the solds in the Los Gatos area. And then you can look at all the agents. It might be the same guy. It might be the same guy. So just give them a call. I'm like, hey, I just got a listing in the area and I know you sold a house there. So you may have some extra buyers looking. I was like, would you like to come by for a showing or here's the property? So be proactive now. So whenever the market shifts, it's already just like night and day. It's like, it's, trained in with you so you're already ready to go so does that make sense to you guys 
you know, always try to be proactive because if you're not, if the market shifts, you're going to be stuck out there. And I'm like, hey, I got 60 homes listed, but nobody's buying. You didn't make any money. You wasted money. And it just, we're here. Well, we're here to help people, but we're also here to make money. You know, if you don't want to make money, just send it to me because I need it. <laughs> just send it on over. <laughs> so, all right. Make buyer presentations to get listings, right? So, all right, I like this, but I don't like this, but I'll, I'll give you what, you know, what it is. So before you have a buyer, you know, you have to make sure you sit down and have the talk with them, the, you know, the buying cons consultation, because they're going to have expectations. I'm like, hey, you know, we get it every day. It's like, hey, I want a house over here in Summerlin. I want this and this, and I want it for 300. I'm like, yeah, in 2009, 10, I could have got that for you, but no, that doesn't exist. Or they'll ask you for unicorns. And I'm like, right? Like, you have to make sure that the expectations on how it's going to go. And when you go through the process of buying a house, and if you don't know that process, you know, you could ask another agent, say, hey, what do I do? I got, I have a, a client that wants to buy. We're under contract. What do I do next? And you have to be able to go through that process. But to get from A to B, you have to make sure you understand that process because you're going to have to tell the buyer that whenever they come in and say, Hey, what's the next step? So one of the things that I'm should be working on it, you know, I just haven't gotten around to it, but I need to is I need to create a video library that kind of messages them all out. I'm like, Hey, this is the first step. What you do, you should get pre-qualified, right? Because if you don't get pre-qualified, you know, it's, we don't know what they qualify for. And it just, it really, a waste of time if they don't get qualified or they don't have to show you the proof of funds because you don't know what they really qualify for. Take example, I had Ted. He owns a famous pizza place in the Washington area, makes over a million dollars a year, right? Wanted a special, you know, $600,000 home here in Vegas that wasn't really extravagant, but 600,000. So when he opened his franchise out here, he'd have a cool place to live. He wasn't gonna be there all the time. He flies out here. He's like, hey, you know, he makes these famous. He's in the article. We fly him or we drew drive around. So he make everything looks good. And he found a couple of homes he likes. We went to go make an offer. And then what do you know? The banker's like, he has too much commercial debt. We can't give him a loan. I was like, whoa. So I pretty much wasted the whole day. Not necessarily, but because he wasn't able to do anything, we would have, you know, went through this process a little differently. Number one is, hey, that guy is a high net worth guy for what he is in the pizza industry. Maybe he knows somebody that may be looking to buy or sell. So I'll give him a sample. Hey, I'll do my standard run. I'll show him through Green Valley, Henderson area, take him up to Summerland. And then that's where, hey, this could be the spot. So hopefully he ends up telling his own people what exactly that is. So did I waste a whole day? Eh, kind of, but I could have got that truncated down to two hours and say, hey, at least it was a meet and greet. And that's where the pre-qualifications come in, you know, comes in handy. You know, it's, if you don't have that, you know, just wasting time. But I think if you're a new agent, I'll bring us into the next section is maybe it might be advantageous to, you know, maybe look at a few homes here and there just to make sure you know what you're doing and maybe take a friend and we'll go into that in the next one. So, but the, but the next one is preview real estate. What does that mean? Do you guys know what that means in your area? What do you, what does this mean? What do you think it means? I'm gonna start calling you people. Calvin, what do you think that means? Uh, probably, right? Probably like, you know, check on the MLS uh, daily and see the market is and also go to the um, open houses. Yeah, absolutely. That would work out too, too. I didn't even think about the MLS stuff because I was just thinking about um, new homes. Do you guys have new homes in your area? So if you have new homes in your area, you know, it's really easy to drop in and take a look and you're like, hey, get in there and take a look. I'm like, all right, now I know what this looks like and I know what this price is. Maybe take a couple of pictures, some videos and stuff like that. And try to build some kind of library, library like that as well. So I am a new home specialist here in Vegas and about 14 to 15 of my deals are all new homes. I only purchase new homes as well. So I know that process down packed and I look at new homes probably, I say once a week, maybe every other week. 
Um, this is because we have a, a whole bunch of new homes available. And I'll take some pictures and I'll do some kind of semi lead generation that way as well is I'll take the good, I'll post it on social media, maybe some Instagram stuff, but it can't be your core business. You can't be sitting around, hey, look at me, I'm inside this house. That can't be your core business. You'll get one or two little buyers that way, but it can't be your core business. It just can't. Um, yeah. And brokers opens. Uh, we don't have a lot here. It just, maybe in your area, it may be different, but I know in Oklahoma, they have tons and tons of broker opens and then it's, it's cool to go in there. I'm like, you know, it is what it is, but yeah. So I would say, all right, today's the day I need to go look at four or five houses, right? And that's going to be on your, uh, to do list somewhere in here. I think what is it? Ten houses a week or something like that. I'll take a look at it. It's PSA, but yeah, to be able to go through and they can go through the MLS. I'm like, hey, I really want to work in, you know, the Sherman Gardens. I just made that up. I don't even know where that is, but I just made that up. And then look for a couple of houses there, and maybe if they're vacant, you know, go in and take a look at it and say, hey, you know what, this looks good. You know, at least you'll get understanding. You walk in and go through the process. And if you want to at a point where you're just really starting, you haven't really showed anybody, take a friend and tell a friend, look, man, I was like, I will buy you lunch if you just role play with me. And role playing helps out because spitting it out for the first time, it's not going to work out. It just not. It, it is, it's just going to be rough. But if you've done it three or four or five times, it's going to come out really easy and it's going to come out really smooth. And what they want is when your buyers and sellers are looking at you, they're looking at you at a trusted source. They're also looking at you. I'm like, all right, how can I disqualify this guy? This guy's already here. We're already talking face to face. How can I disqualify him? That's what they're looking for. And you do give them no reasons to disqualify you. So they're going to work with you. And if you give them good service, they're going to refer their friends, family, coworkers, you know, ex-girlfriends, ex-boyfriends, everyone. And that's what you want. You know, we don't care where that comes from. It's like be able to give them such good service to be able to help you out. So, and then there'll be repeat um, buyers and sellers later down the road. So preview properties. And then if you need to, you can go ahead and bring a friend or bring another agent. So you look on your list. If you guys don't know each other, say, hey, hey, Calvin, I'm like, you want to come with me to go look at these new DR Horton homes? I'm like, yeah, then maybe do a role play in that. It doesn't hurt. It looks funny at first, but after a while, it becomes natural and you want to, you want to make sure that it's so natural that, it, you know, people that you're working with are going to say, ah, this guy's a champ. I like Kelvin. Kelvin's a lot. It's like, that guy's good. You know, just to make sure that's how it all works out. And then another thing too, is what I used to tell our new agents here is we don't have any more rentals anymore. Cause apparently everyone from California moved here and took all of our rentals. We literally have no rentals to show as a new agent. I really like new agents doing rentals. I say not really for the money, but it is nice to have a, something a little bit. But I think going through individual communities and going through the rock, the walkthrough process of showing a house, trying to find the house, because if you take a look at something here, like the first time I went to, uh, I went to uh, Aliante Country Club, Google Maps tells me to go through the back gate and there's nothing there. It's just a gate for the fire uh, department to go through. So then when you go there, you look dumb because now you got to make a U-turn and drive all the way around, which is another three miles. Now your client's like, has this guy ever been here before? I don't know if I really want to drop 900,000. This guy's never been there, right? So it's good to go through the process, especially if it's a farm or an area that you really want to work, be able to get in through there and understand, hey, you know what, this is not my first rodeo. And I hope that makes sense to you guys because it happened to me. And I tell you everything that's happened to me and how I do it a little bit better. It just, it just happens. <laughs> so, all right, cool. What time is it? All right, cool. We have a couple more minutes before we take like a somewhat of a break. Um, all right, and if you guys need to rehash something that I passed through already, or say, hey, that doesn't sound right, or how can it go in more? Go ahead and interrupt me anytime, and I'll give you the, the best answer I can, because it's just, it may not be resonating in the way that it should be. So now that you're growing your business, you can grow your business all you want, but you have to run the business, right? You know, grow it. I'm like, hey, and I am one of those people, like, it was really bad. Like, it was really bad. Like, I'm not the greatest agent when I first started. I'm still not the greatest. I'm always learning. So one of my biggest problems early in life is I'm like, great, 
I go to this company and this company is like, oh, you get floor time, right? So I'm on the floor, which means if the phone rings at this office, if you're there, you get to pick up the lead. I'm like, oh, that's great. So I sit there all day, nothing. I sit there for a week, nothing. I'm like, this sucks. There's no training, nothing. So I'm like, yeah, this is not for me. But what is for me is I started out doing open houses. I did open houses almost every weekend for the first eight, nine months, 10 months. Yeah. I think it was, that's all I did. Every weekend is open houses. So, and the reason being that I'm telling you guys, this is to run the business is, Hey, I was getting great leads, right? I had the sign in sheet. I was, I had an iPad almost be able to go through all this stuff. I think the iPad came in probably 10 or 11, something like that. Um, but I never did anything with them. If they didn't want to buy or sell today, you know, I never touched them because I didn't use a database because I was dumb. I came from technology. I came from a database background, but we didn't use a database, which was dumb. So yeah, you can grow your business, which I was, I was grabbing all these leads and I did nothing with them. I guess since I'm in that topic, I'll tell you even more that was really dumb is uh, being an IT guy, I was early on in uh, Craigslist. I actually ended up being a Craigslist king in 2011, 12, and 13. Uh, I, I was so good at Craigslist that we wrote a little bit of curriculum around it for KW. And then here's the really funny part is they even put me on stage at Family Reunion. It was a big you know, conference because this guy did Craigslist. I was getting 600 to 700 leads a month, right? That's a lot. That's a lot. And I threw everything into Craigslist, had these cool looking stuff. Our, my ads were legit because I did some of the HTML stuff behind the scenes. So they don't were like legit, legit. And here's the funny part is I didn't know what to do with them because the leads were coming in. And if you weren't ready to buy with cash, I couldn't help you because I was so picking all these other ones. I didn't know with anything about nurture, um, using the CRM to be able to, to get leads. If you weren't able to buy in the first three, four days looking for houses, I couldn't help you because I was dumb. Yeah, so that's... And that the tools are here now for you to be make sure you don't go that route. You know, it's it is what it is. I should be retired now, but no, I was so dumb during those years because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so yeah, I'm pretty transparent. So just to let you guys know. So <laughs> so the run your business started with a market seller listing. So let's say you get to that point. I'm like, hey, I got a listing. You know, we already went through some of that points. So I'm like, hey what am I going to do when I get a listing? I'm like, yeah, we should do that reverse prospect and call all your agent friends, call your whole database. Um, but there's other cool things you could do to market a listing. So what do you guys think you would do if you got a listing today? I gave you a listing right now. What's the first thing you're doing? Sign contract. It's good to go. Pitches are ready to go. You're going to go on the MLS later today. What are you doing? Reaching out to people and letting them know the you have a listing that will be coming on the market. Yeah, absolutely. What else would you guys be doing? That should be the first thing. Cartwheels. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Don't be counting your money right away, though. <laughs> Social media. Exactly. Go that route. You know, let people know you're in business. And what you really want to be is you want to make sure you're on top of mind, right? It's like, even if you don't, con you have to contact people to make sure they still know who you are. Because if they don't, you know, it, why even be in business? All right, what, what other things are we doing with our, our listings? Or could be doing? Anything else? That's it. We're just calling a few people. We're going to throw it in the MLS and we're just going to pray. Pray should probably be one of them too. Um, to hope it sells, but not in today's market. So another cool thing that you could be doing is this is just stuff that you could be getting your thought process around right now is you get a listing. I'm like, all right, so let's say that listing is going to be in Summerlin. Summerlin is a really big area. You know, it's just really big. So let's say it's in Sky Knoll. So what you're going to do is, hey, you know what? I'm going to have a coming soon or just listed flyer. You could do that, send it out. You could say, hey, you know what? I'm going to start preparing an open house. I don't do open houses where people are living there. It's just weird because we have professional teams that come in there and just rob people. It just, you know, it is what it is. And so we always do it on empty houses. But yeah, like an open house, have that set up. And then here's a really cool part if you go down that one is, all right, so your open house is at 123 Main Street. You go a day before, 
start knocking the neighborhood. I'm like, hey, I have an open house. I may have some sandwiches. I may not, you know, it's like, would you like to come by? And what you really want to do is like, you want to introduce yourself to all the sellers next to it because selling this house, you know, it's going to sell. So I'm like, we got to go on to the next. So you knock the neighborhood around and say, hey, come over. So they can come over. So you one, if they answer the door and you meet them, I'm like that's one met and then invite them to come over. You already know where they live. I'm like, all right, cool. You already know where that guy lives. So if that guy comes over and it's John, I'm like, John, hey, thanks for coming. I was like, I hope you didn't come for the donuts, right? You know, so at least that's your second time meeting. I'm like, John, I was like, if you'd like, I know your house is a little bit bigger and uh, between me and you, John, I was like, I think your house is a little bit better. This one's at 650. I think I could get you 700. I was like, do you mind if I create some kind of CMA for you? So CMA is just a, a market analysis for that house, right? So, you know, just to be able to get in the door, once you're in the door, it's on you. It's all about your scripts and what you know about, you know, selling real estate. And right now I would say, don't worry about failing, right? Just failing is just part of business, right? It, it's not a real fail if, if you learn, because if you don't learn and you keep doing the same mistakes over and over again, like myself, it's, you know, you're just wasting time. So make sure you hone in on those skills and be able to get in there. But you know, so those are the things that you could be doing when you're marketing a, a listing. And, you know, it's just open house creates more buyers as well, especially in today's market. Anybody do an open house yet? Yes, no, maybe so. No, not yet. No. Is open houses, is that something you guys do in your area? Yeah. Oh, that's good. So we had a guy here that... And we had a guy here that did open houses in my zip code every single day and it got annoying. <laughs> he had, his team would do an open house every single day for almost a year straight. And I'm like, it gets annoying because you know, it's, you gotta be better, smarter and faster than those people. Right. And that's my own zip code. So it's, you gotta make sure you out hustle them and think smarter than them. So um, that's where you go to Facebook. <laughs> Be able to do that so um yeah so it, open house is a great way um that's how i got my start because i have no direction nobody told me what to do i just had like oh i think this will work and i think because my personality is somewhat charming sometimes you know just sometimes i said if i can get in front of somebody i think i got them you know it's just like that's my thought process if i can get in front of you you're mine and there might be <laughs> x amount of people that really don't like me. so i'm like you know, it goes and goes. So, all right. But those are things you could be doing with the, with the seller listing. So, and then with showing buyers houses, you know, it's, you have to get through that process of showing houses. Like, has anyone showed a house yet? One, two, three, five houses, any houses? If you haven't showed any houses, you guys should team up and go show houses and role play because Here's a, here's a problem is, so let's call it, you're showing a million dollar house, right? To your first client and you get in there and then what is this? And I'm like, I don't know. I've never seen that before. Well, you probably should be able to go in there and take a look at it. I'm like, oh, uh, that's, that's a Honeywell, <laughs> that's a Honeywell um, thermometer there. You know, it's like, it's, you know, thermostat. You have to be able to know that, you know, it's like, hey, that's that, you know, and, you know, well, that's commercial grade hood. I'm like, what's this Viking product? And I'm like, I don't know. I never heard of a Viking product, but it looks rather fancy. I'm like, you say, hey, you know, Viking is one of the top of the line uh, uh, things that you could buy for your house. And this, you know, it really matches this decor here, right? So be able to go in and, you know, go through the process and figure out what people are going to be asking. And you're not going to know until you get that experience, right? So the more houses you show, the more experience you're going to get. And then here's the really funny part is too, is finding the lockbox, right? That's my joy of my business every day is when I go show is where is this lockbox? You know, we don't put it on our front doors here because apparently people hate it, put it on the front doors. So it is a scavenger hunt to find the lockboxes. I don't know about your areas, but you know, you have to look exactly where it's going to be. It's going to be on the hose bit. You know, it's going to be on the gas meter, which is a big no-no. You know, it's going to be on the sidewall. You know, so who knows? It could be on the fence across the street, right? Yeah, that happens 
or it could be where all the bugs are. Yeah, it's, you know, be able to go through that process. You know, you should get in front of a lockbox. I don't know if you guys have electric one, electronic ones, just to make sure you go through that process and process just to make sure you don't look silly on your first day. Because when they hire you, they expect you to be a professional, right? You know, we're just not halfing it through. Want to make sure we're good, right? So those are the things that we should be doing. And, you know, definitely going into new houses, if you can, take a look at those and be able to understand. And if nobody comes with you, you could do a mock walkthrough. I'm like, hey, you know, this is a nice open floor plan. As like the bedrooms are separated from each other. So you got the primary bedroom over there versus, you know, having the kids over here or something like that. And I'll be able to go through that process so it's not your first time. So, all right, I'm gonna run through these. So negotiate the contracts. If you guys haven't done a contract yet, you should print it out and you should look at it every day. You just print it out and look at it every day. So look at the purchase agreement and you should look at the listing agreement and then go through. And if you don't understand it, ask your colleagues, ask your broker, say, hey, I don't understand this part. What does this mean? What does this mean to you? How do I negotiate this? So be able to look into those things and be able to understand that stuff because you're going to have to explain it to somebody. And you're going to get some college professor, you know, from the University of NYU. She's going to ask you all these questions and you're going to sit there dumbfounded. I'm like, I don't know. It's like, what do you mean you don't know? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just, yeah, then you look pretty dumb. That happened to me. <laughs> yeah. She's the sweetheart. That was the fastest deal I've ever done. Uh, offer to close six days. That was fast. But she rode me the whole way. It's good stuff. So be able to understand the contract and negotiate it because you can't negotiate it if you don't understand the contract, right? It's like, you have to understand it, you know, and go to classes, go to your broker classes, right? So your broker should be putting some kind of classes on about, you know, the contracts. Or if you have some question about a contract, you guys should probably have some kind of Facebook group internally for your office. Say, hey, what does this mean? and see what the other agents are able to say, because you're going to have some seasoned agents and get into some kind of dialogue on that. So, yeah, so transaction management to closing. So what does that mean to you? So if you guys haven't had a closing yet, so you're going to have to get your paperwork in order, right? So we have command, command's going to get opportunities. And that whole class system, that's something you should really get into because um, that's how you're going to get paid. It just plain and simple, that's how you're going to get paid. If you can afford a transaction coordinator that could work out. You know, it's that's was how I started. And the really dumb things about that is I didn't take listings early on. Well, one, because they're all short sales, but two, I didn't want to do the paperwork, which is totally dumb. That was a dumb reason to not take listings, but I was dumb. I'm like, hey, I'm a buyer's guy. I love marketing to buyers and I want to take buyers. That's me. I'm like, I buyers, buyers, buyers. What do you know? Who's sacrificing today? Me, because I have a lot of buyers. Why? Because the market doesn't have a lot of listings, so I'm getting my teeth kicked in. So yeah, but that's what I get, right? So yeah, it's you have to have the management system and be able to go in there. You can go in there and create your own um, your own opportunity inside a command and go through that route too. And you should probably jump in command every single day. Give yourself one task to do. I'm like, hey, I'm going to load the 10, 10 people inside of there. You know, 10 new contacts inside of command. I'm gonna put some labels inside of command as well. And that's all stuff that's gonna come, it's gonna come easy later on in life, uh, but you gotta start putting in that work early, right? So that's what transaction management is. And then we'll go into vendor management. So vendor management, what does that mean to you guys? Tell me what do you think vendor management is? When you have um, vendors prepping the house um, before it goes on the market. Yeah, that could be one. So that could be, um, that could be a multitude of different vendors or one big giant vendor that to help you get the house ready. So you can have your cleaners. You could have uh, somebody that does some kind of restoration beforehand. Um, you could have flooring people in there. So what vendor management is, is you have to have a list of vendors, right? Just a list of vendors. And it could be anybody. And one of the big vendors that you really need is you really need a great uh, lender. And the reason being is that lender is going to help you out. They may not send you leads. If they can, that'd be great. If they don't, I'd rather have, I'd rather have a lender that I know that I can 
I can get it to close versus the lender that just hands them out and then hands you leads and you waste your time and they don't close. I'd rather have a lender that's able to do their job and understand. I'm like, hey, you know what? If something goes wrong, I need you to help me out. I need you to take responsibility and be able to help me get this close. And that's one of the things that, you know, it just, it just really sucks is we just had one two weeks ago. I gave, <laughs> I gave my client a list of uh, lenders that we use. And I said, you are, you can open yourself and pick any lender you want. You know, you can pick your own lender if you want. So she sure does. She picks this guy. This guy's name is James. And let me just tell you, I put an additional 16 hours of physical work to make sure it closed because James apparently was his first time doing a loan and he couldn't get stuff done. So once you go through the whole process of getting a house done, right? You've done everything you needed to and you're at that point, you're waiting for that clear to close because you're gonna need that clear to close on the loan to make sure the, lo uh, the house closes, you know, you're gonna need that because it's still an underwriting somehow, it just blows my mind. But if you don't get that, I've already done all the work I needed, right? So I deserve or, or need to get paid at that point. You know, if it's the first house I show and, you know, we offer and we don't win, I'm like, I don't really deserve to get paid, right? But if we go through the whole process and we're just waiting for that clear to close and waiting for the lender to do their job, I kind of need to make sure I get paid because I've already done all the work I've done, right? And we need to get paid at this point. So makes story short is it took an additional 16 hours. And one of the key factor was they couldn't get employment verification. And what I did was because it was with the VA, I called the VA directly to one of our VA hospitals. I got to the switchboard. I said, hey, I need to talk to somebody in HR. So I'm like, okay. So the lady in HR is like, hey, um, how can I help you? I said, look, my client is starting Monday. We need employment verification so we can close on her home and she can start work on Tuesday or Monday and she'll be in her house. We just need employment verification. verification. She's like, oh, you just need to go to this website called, oh, what was it called? Something home something.com and then you need to put in this number which is like two four six eight and then you would put the employee number in there and then that would give you the verification that sounded weird to me so i called my personal lender and i'm like hey does this sound right she goes that is the best way of doing it and i'm like oh i sent a nice little email to james yeah i said his name james i said hey this is what you need they took an additional eight hours to figure that out and we lost two more days but I already did the work because now you're messing with my money that I'm bringing home to me and my family. So you got to do the extra effort on that stuff. So I don't know if that makes sense, but you got to make sure your vendors are good to go. Like they're good to go. So your lender, and then maybe have a couple of uh, inspection people, a couple of roofing people, a couple of trash out people. You got to have a list of everything that you need to get a house done. And you may not, you know, I don't really have many mold people, but I do have mold people because when that time comes, I need to say, hey, I need a mold inspection just to make sure that's good to go. And hopefully that makes sense. You got to grow that out. And the first lender you use may be great. You just make sure you have a backup and a backup of that just so you're not ousted whenever that person's like, hey, you know what? I'm leaving. And then you're screwed. I'm like, oh no, you have to have some secondaries in the back and you want to have that on all, all occasions as well, right? So... All right, we're almost done with this first section. I'll let you guys get on a break, but set goals. You got what's your goal? Your guys' goal should be at least one deal by the end of the year because we are mid October and you should at least be able to get one more one deal done by the end of the year, right? And wouldn't that be nice to be able to get one deal? And say, hey, you know what? If I get my deal done in the next 30 days, there's still room to get a second one, a third one, a fourth one. If you get five deals, wow, you are ready right? So anyone want to say, hey, I'm going to set a goal of doing at least one deal by the end of the year, or at least get one listing? I think it should be, should be something. If you have no goals, you don't know what you're going to work for. Right, Roma? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So who has a goal of at least one by the end of the year? There's still plenty of time. There's a lot of things you could be doing just to make sure you're, you get there. So, you know, just show your hands. You should do it. All right. Risk management and compliance. You know, that's something that, you know, you have to get your paperwork in place. And that goes into your transaction management just to make sure all your stuff is right. And if it doesn't, you have to know the contracts. So they all feed on top of each other. If you don't know the contract, you're not going to know if it's right or wrong or there's small different things. And it's something we get with our seller, um, 
real property disclosure that we get in our state with, you know, it's the law, we have to get it. There's always a one checkbox at the end. It says other blank and it's NA, yes or no. And nobody ever checks it or does anything with it. So I'm like, every time I get a, a you know, on the buy side, I get that seller, uh, it's called the SRPD. Every time I get it, I'm always doing compliance on their own stuff because I got to shoot it back to make sure I'm protecting my clients and protecting ourselves as well. And at the end of the day to get paid. So, you know, if you have questions, concerned, you know, make sure you ask people because the last thing you need is having a vulnerability that your client's liable or you're liable. You want to make sure that everything is tight. And that's why I love my office here because our, uh, our risk management compliance broker is she was on our state board. So she went in through all the compliance issues for the whole state. So she keeps me on my toes and I'm not the greatest. So she keeps me on my toes and that's why I'm here. And then, uh, so yeah, so make sure your questions concerned, make sure you know the contracts because that's very important. If it doesn't sound right, ask questions. Tell me, how did you learn your contracts? How did I learn it? Like, did you have training besides reading so, it? But how did you like so know all way, the tricks in the... Yeah, so the way I got it was, <laughs> I got really lucky is, so our office, the first office I was, it was a little boutique firm. So they gave us a packet, right? So our packet had all the contracts that we needed to close the house. So I went through and I read it and I'm like, all right, does that make sense? That makes sense. All right, yeah, because well, the contract is a contract, read it through. And then what I did was, I asked my broker if I could see a ratified contract that already had closed. Maybe she could mark out a few things. She didn't, you know, but she handed it to me. So I saw what a, a contract looks filled out. And then I matched them back and forth. And I went back to ask questions. I said, hey, what is this? Why is this due diligence period 10 days? You know, why can't it be 12? Why can't it be four? What are those real things? You know, what is this? What does this mean that, you know, the walkthrough could be done three days before closing? Yeah, let's, that's how I got through is I took a blank one. I read it over and over. Then I had one that was filled out and I looked at it. And then when I came to KW, we do have contract classes. I say every, what, few months? Like, I think it's the buyer's one and then I'll do the listing one. Um, and then I'll go to the other contracts that are supplementals. Um, that's how I learned. But asking questions is going to get you where you need to be. Hilda, do we have something like that? Hilda? Oh, I don't know. Is she still here? Um, if not, maybe... Sorry, what was your question? Maybe I can help answer. Um, do we have something of what LB just described where so we have... Contract training class? Do you guys do that? Contract training? Yes. Yes, we are. Um, so we are having our, our first... Our, we're having the new RPA um contract class actually in november you guys will learn all about that on friday when we have our team meeting um but after this starting 2022 we'll be having uh every month we'll have different contracts uh classes that will allow you to understand how to you know fill those things out and understand everything about the the forms so yep it's coming up in the future yeah, so that's great. You guys should go to those classes, ask questions, and then fill out the contract while you're going out as well as with when they're showing you. I'm like, all right, I can fill it out. Then you can read it over. I'm like, all right, that makes sense. That does definitely make sense. So um, those are things that, you know, you should be doing. And, you know, going to these trainings um, are going to help you out. And then one of the most important part of running a business is... You got to make money. You know, we're nonprofit. You could file a nonprofit, but I don't think it would work out. But we are here to make money. And we help people. We make money. And we do the right things. You know, it, it'll, it'll all come to us. But you have to make sure you manage your money. And I can give you an example of an agent. So agent sold 250 homes in a year, right? Did not turn a profit for the year. He was short $65,000 for the year. All right, sold 250 homes, short 65,000 for the year. I had to think to myself, how does that work? Oh, he might be in Detroit where he's selling $30,000 homes, right? That was the first thought, right? Detroit's kind of hot now, so in case you guys want to know, but that was my thought process. So what happened was, he was paying sixty to eighty thousand dollars in leads with this company that started with the Z. He wasn't getting a return on investments in there. He had six admins that he was paying forty to sixty thousand each. 
all right, at that size, if there's money to be made, sure, you could have six. You know, they got to be doing whatever they they got to be producing at that point. Then he had a rental spot, which was like 50,000 a month. And it just, the money wasn't there. So he ended up losing money. And you have to look at your money first and figure out, hey, these are my goals. And this is what I'm going to do to be able to get there. And you got to look and say, hey, if I sell one house a month and that house is, call it a million because it's easy to work. And then we use the 3% because it's easier to work for me because I know a lot of threes. So let's say it's 30,000. I'm like, all right, can I live off of 30,000? I'm like, I, I hope so. Maybe. I don't know. What are my expenses? Oh, I paid 15 grand for my leads. I'm like, great. Now can I live off of 15 grand? I'm like, oh, I really run Facebook ads. I'm not really getting a return. That's another 10 grand. I'm like, all right, can I live live off of five grand? I'm like, oh, I got a car payment. And I'm like, that's not going to work. Man, I'm left with a dollar. And I'm like, maybe I shouldn't be in this. But I could tell everybody on social media, I sold 10 houses. But no, that doesn't matter. And that's why I make sure you guys know that what you see on social media, don't worry about it because they may not be doing as much as you really think are. And if they are selling houses, they could be listing it for cheap. We get a lot of 1% listings here. I know we're not supposed to talk about percentages, but you know, it's, it is what it is. It's just, it's, you know, people giving the discounts out there. So anyway, all right, we're at our first break. I hope I didn't bore you, but if there's any questions, concerns, uh, what do you guys need? Do you guys need 10 minutes, five minutes? What do you guys need? We'll just call it be back at 10 15. What is that? Four minutes? Oh, never mind. All right, we, I, I'll spot you guys to uh, 10 20. Then we'll go faster with some of the other stuff, but I'll still be here. So let me know if you guys have questions and concerns, and we'll see you at, uh, at 10 20. Sound good? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Uh. Back. All right, let me jump back here to make sure we are back here. All right. All right, is everyone back? Here. Yeah, I'm back. All right, so so that was fun. Did anybody have anything exciting they learned out of that or just like, oh, that guy talks a lot? Because I do talk a lot. Like a lot. So, all right, I guess nobody learned anything, so we'll move on. All right, so here's our roadmap. So I'm supposed to tell you, I'm like, hey, this is our roadmap. 
Uh, this is where we'll be going to the next section. And we're going to be growing our business and running your business, which we already kind of talked about already. We're going to set weekly and daily objectives. So that's where the important part is. Create accountability because you can tell yourself you're going to do this and nobody holds you accountable. You know what? That really uh, not going to do anything for you. And then we're going to recap at the end with the ahas if there is any. And daily success habits. I posted this today on my social media. I said, people do not decide their futures. They decide their habits and their habits decide their future. Does that make sense to you? Because it sure does to me. And that's why I posted it this morning. Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah, so the main goal of this is to make sure that we use, we're time efficient on what we do and make sure we're doing the right things to make sure that we leverage ourselves into selling real estate, right? So we get those habits done, which is we're lead genning, we're doing lead follow-up, which is the, probably the most important part. Um, and then we're able to go through our contracts and our scripts, be able to know all those. We have a pretty successful business. So we want to make sure that habit becomes second nature when we get through it, right? So it's it's part of being a real estate agent. You know, it's real estate agents, you just like, oh, I'm just doing real estate. And actually, you're a business owner. So you got to start telling people you're a business owner because you are, you run your own business. You do exactly what you want to do with your business, you know, you can make it successful, you can just tank it either way. So it's, it's, it's what it is. Uh, yeah, so you guys already touched on your 401s before, right? So you know exactly what that is. So we'll touch on that later uh, with the 411s. So I'm on the next section here. So it didn't show, but I will, I will pull mine up just to, to show you. So we're going to be going into showing some kind of uh, what our what our tasks are, time blocking, and I'll show you what my calendar looks like. Uh, this is my real calendar. It's not some random made up one. Um, let me see share. Let me say. Pull this up here. All right. Let me see. Share. I am going to share. All right. Uh, so that's my calendar. Can you guys see my calendar? Yes. Thank oh, you. Okay, cool. So that is for tomorrow because today I just pretty much had all the. Um, everything set up that way for today's class because i am you know making time which i time block for this class and i've known about it for i see two three months maybe uh so it's fantastic so here's an overview of what my calendar looks like and what you know theoretically i'm supposed to be doing through all these <laughs> through the day so um majority of the time so about 90 percent of the time Depends on if uh, my wife has to go to work or not, but you know, I'm at the gym or on a bike. So it doesn't look like it, but I'm a cyclist. Um, I actually race mountain bikes, which is uh, enduro racing, which is super cool for me because uh, they don't time you on the uphill. They only time you on the downhill. So it's a win-win for me. And apparently I am semi-fast going downhill. So that's a win-win. And I created a YouTube channel for my stuff. So it's uh you know, it is what it is. But yeah, this is basically how my day is broken out. So at the gym or on a bike in the morning, and then at 620, I start to look and see uh, if there's vulnerability in the market. When I'm talking about market is I day trade, you know, call it gambling or not, but it is what it is. Um, but that's time blocked out. Uh, and I stopped trading, uh, you know, right before seven. I don't really do any more tradings after that because it's just the market's so crazy on that. But outside of that is, is what it is. So then I got to go and I got to do personal stuff, right? Because if you don't have any kids, you don't have to worry about that stuff. You just got to worry about you. If you're not married, you just got to worry about you. But if you're married, have kids, you got to worry about the whole family thing and to make sure the business doesn't consume you. Uh, so you don't have a life, which I know a lot of agents do. It's, it's pretty tough. I'm like, when do you see your family? You know, that's one of those things.
So nine o'clock, I'm trying to get into my lead follow-up. Um, people like the lead gen first. I, I don't like that. It's just me personally, but in the Gary script thing, he says, you got to do lead gen beforehand. I, I, I do my lead follow-up beforehand because here's my thing. Here's my thought process on that is my lead follow-ups are more likely to buy or sell a house sooner than my lead gen, right? And we'll, we'll touch on that later. But the reason why I like that is, all right, I've already talked to John. I keep using the word John because you know, I already talked to John before and I'm following up with John. I'm like, John, what did you think of those houses that have been coming your way? Did you like any? I was like, have you got approved yet? Did you fix your credit? We you know just following up. Because what happens is if John wasn't ready last week or last month, now he's ready, but he hasn't heard from you. And I'm like, did Albie, is he still playing? Is he still selling real estate? Is he playing around with what's going on? I don't know. He hasn't called me. Oh, hey, Jen, how are you? I was like, you like the same coffee as I do. And I'm like, oh, what do you do for work? Oh, you sell real estate? Oh, I have a real estate guy, but he doesn't call me. I was like, I just got pre-approved. Yeah. So that's what you don't want to happen is John meeting a new agent, you know, because you haven't signed a buyer broker agreement yet. You just, I know they're not quite popular in uh, California, but a buyer broker agreement just kind of says, hey, you're tied to me and I'm tied to you, but we could break up if we need to. But it kind of says, hey, I'm willing to work for you if you sign this buyer brokerage agreement. So, and I, it's not popular in California here. It's semi-popular, uh, but it's something you can have in place. But if you're not top of mind calling up and following up these people, they may look to somebody else. You know, like today, um, I didn't have it on, but I had a note to uh, send my uh, client in now, you know, friend, a happy anniversary. You know, it's his anniversary. And he said, let me just read it to you because I sent it as a text. Uh, he said, I said, hey, happy anniversary. He says, thanks. I actually remember before my wife did. I'm like, LOL. See, that's a that's a good touch, you know, and just we could proceed on and say, hey, what are you guys' plans? You know, at least they're thinking about you. Right. So, and it took all of what, two seconds to be able to send that out. So it's something you can have that automated inside of a command as well, but it comes from a different number because he's one of my friends and I know him. I just want to make sure um, I reach out to him. And this is the second time I reached out to him because I did invite him to the Raider game. So the really cool part and bad part about the, the Raiders is, so the Raiders are here in Vegas and I have season tickets is I can send them out to my clients, but the beauty part is, eh, it's not beauty, but you know, it, it's, it's a numbers game. So the reason being is you can ask all your clients and if they're not vaccinated, they can't go to the game, but the thought process is there. Say, hey, would you like to go to the game? Oh man, I'm not vaccinated. I'm like, man, I'm like, I really want you to go to the game, but I can't take you because you need a vaccination to go inside a Raider Stadium, not a, uh, a negative test, but you actually need to be double vax. So I'm able to expand that ticket pool a little further than I normally could. Hey, you know, it is what it is, but I'm just telling you that's something I did. So, uh, and it kind of been working out great for me. So once you're done with the follow-up, you go into the lead gen and the lead gen for me is to make sure that I'm like, Hey, you know what? You could always add more down the pipe. Cause once you get everybody close, there's nobody else. And I ran into that, um, in July. Is it July? Yeah, July is I cleaned out my pipe and I didn't actively look for anything else because the two things I was worried about is I focus on what was important for me at that time. And that important part was selling my house. So I sold my own personal house during that time. And because the time frame was really short, because it was like a two week window, and then I got 25,000 more than I asked for, you know, it's, I had to hurry up and I focused on what was important to me. And I was moving out of my house. And then once I got out of my house, I didn't have anywhere to go, but I am living at a place that we actually own, but my in-laws are living there too. So it's a one big family, but that's besides the point. I didn't have any more business going on because I focused on just doing that one thing and that pipeline dried up. I didn't do anything during that process of finding a place to move, which was really hard. So we ended up moving there. But to get storage, get movers and all that stuff, that's all time consuming. And I didn't have time to lead generate. So come August, I didn't have anything. Why? Because I didn't do anything. And I only showed one client who was a doctor houses during that process. And it was a six week process of getting a house ready to list, getting a house sold and moving out and getting everything organized. 
and buying a new house. That was a big process. So I only showed to the doctor client because she was living in a trailer and because we couldn't win. I think she was on 36 offers and we could not win. But yeah, so she was the only one that I focused on and, you know, she needed help and I got her in there. So, all right, you got to make sure the most important part is you got to have energy. So you should have something in the morning and then you should have some kind of lunch midday, you know, just to make sure that energy level keeps up. And after that is going to showing and getting ready. So here's a really cool thing. I know if you go in the office a lot, you know, you got to change some stuff around. But for me, I don't go to the office because um, a lot of distractions here, uh, just because of my IT background, everyone has questions about stuff. I love helping people, but I got to run my own business. <laughs> I just do. Um, but it, I, in technology, I work from home too. So that's why I already had a setup for me and it just works out best. COVID kind of made everybody work just like me, work from home. Uh, but people came back to the office. I'm not sure a lot of people, you guys at the office, but you have to make sure that where you're working, it, it fits what, what you're trying to do. And my office at home, works for what I do. Right now, it's one of those intermediate ones because uh, I'm still waiting for my new house to be built. So I still have a good setup. It's not great, but it's still a good setup to be able to get work done. And so I use that time to get ready and I don't get ready beforehand because, you know, it just waste of time. Unless I'm really sweaty from the gym, then I'll do all that stuff. But, you know, you can get ready, do your lead follow-up. People like, make sure you're ready, go get coffee, come back home, Hey, I've actually went somewhere and let me go through the process of lead generation. So, and one of my biggest problems early in life was I was struggling doing my lead generation because I was showing houses any given time. It just all over the place, just all over the place. I couldn't get that lead generation time done in time because I was too busy showing houses during that time. So I try to focus. I'm like, look, that first appointment's always at one o'clock. I'm like, sure, you have to do earlier on other times, but if I can get that first appointment at one o'clock, works out great. Uh, depends on if my wife is working that day or not, is I have to have a hard cutoff at three and I let my clients know I got a hard cutoff at this time because I got to pick up my kids. Um, you know, having a family is pretty rough too to be able to do this, but we're flexible on what we can do. So we're very flexible what we can do. So I pick up my kids and we do homework during that time. And like at 630, I like to see if there's any extra fires that may need to be put out. Um, we just, it's real estate, nobody's dying. So if there are some fires, be able to put those out and then some family time. And then recently I just started going to bed at nine o'clock. Yeah, I used to be up to like 11, 1130, but uh, it's really weird is like, I'm getting a little bit more sleeping into it as well. Um, and I noticed a couple of gray hairs have gone away. So I don't know if it's that from the extra sleep. I don't know, but it could be, um, yeah. So it's just, yeah, that's my process. And that's for Friday tomorrow. Um, yeah. And then you can create your own, you don't have to fill out every single minute, you know, and then can you break some of these? Yeah. You're going to break some of these, right? Cause if like, Hey, I'm doing lead follow-up at nine o'clock, but at 9.30, the lender calls. I'm like, hey, I need these three documents signed or you're not closing the next two days. Of course, you're going to get that closed because that's money already done that you could already get. So you're going to move that around, but don't push it off. It's Monday, lead follow-up or lead gen. Oh, I'll do it Tuesday. Oh, I'll do it Wednesday. Oh, I'll do it Thursday. Oh, I'll do it Friday. Oh, you know what? I got happy hour on Friday. I'm like, I can't do it. So you push that out and then you lose this track. But if you take a look at this, you have it written down somewhere, be able to look at it every morning. I'm like, hey, this is what I got to get done. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes, no, maybe so. <laughs> so um, uh, yeah, does it make sense? Yeah, so you should start time blocking because if you don't, you're just going to be sporadic and do whatever you want and you'll run into stuff like I did where I couldn't get enough stuff done because I was too busy running around. And, you know, if you create something like this, you know, it works out better for you. And let's say, hey, I don't have any showings or listings during this time. What could I do at one o'clock if I don't have any showings or listings? What could I do? What do you guys think? Going back to the, the lead, lead gen. gen. You could go back to lead gen. That's good. You could do that. What other things could you do? Study contracts. Yes, there you go. 
What else? What do we got? Fish glue go to open house. Yeah, there you go. That's what I'm looking for is, hey, if I'm not showing, I better get ready to go and show anyways, because I'm going to go out and I can look at some of the new homes or I could say, hey, you know what? I'm going to work on, you know, this area, you know, Hayward, right? I'm going to work at that area or or some other section over there in like Berkeley, I'm gonna work in that area. So I'll get dressed up and I'll go into the area. You know, if there's some houses to look at, I can look at a couple of houses or if there's new construction, I love new construction a lot. I just can't, if you guys don't have a lot there, you know, it's understandable, but here that's all we have because we have all this desert, you know, and people are just building left and right. And I think a lot of agents don't like the new construction just between me and you. I, I really think they don't like the paycheck eight, nine months down the road. So you gotta factor that in as well, right? Yeah, over just, here lb some yeah. builders have stopped some new home builders have stopped giving broker co-ops yeah we, we got that too uh, so we have uh, the guy that starts with an l lenar i guess we just call it out what it is lenar's not paying us um i just did so here's another thing too you got to make sure you have your ducks in a row and your finance in a row too is i had a client looking for something that everyone else in america was looking for in las vegas and he still needed to sell his house. So he said, hey, I'm flying out to Vegas. And I'm like, I want to look at a couple of houses. I'm like, all right, cool. It'll be a nice meet and greet, but I really can't do anything for you. I'll show you a couple of houses just so we can understand where we are. But we can't do anything about it because you haven't even sold your house. And it's going to be a big fight to buy this new house. But I did send him to a new construction. We went together, signed that broker, buyer broker agreement with the uh, builder. They were going to pay me 2.5% and three weeks later under contract they called me and said hey we're not paying you like, what do you mean i was like well the the buyer had been on our website four months ago i'm like you the buyer went on your website and you feel like that's a recurring cost okay and here's the really crappy part about it is they put it in the mls they're paying two and a half percent so guess who's gonna go after them this guy right because i earned the money right but you got to be in a point where there's a point where you can say, hey, here's a buyer broker agreement and say, hey, you have to pay me up to 3% if the other people that come through, I could enforce that. But then you're looking at, hey, these people got to come out of pocket another 11 grand. Not a lot of people have a lot of extra 11 grand to pay you, you know? So you have to say, hey, you know what? I, uh, this is going to be a, a slight donation, but I'm going to need your help later down the road when this thing closes, because we're going to go after them for my money you know, can you help me out? Cause I'm not charging you anything. And that's the right thing to do because a, we could win and pull them out. He actually couldn't pull out. He was already three weeks in. They waited until he was underwritten approved before they told me because they knew I'd make us think, right? Why wouldn't I? So with that said, it's like, Hey, you know, you got to stay in this all the way and say, Hey, you know what? We got to move on. It's we're here to serve, you know, people to make sure they get houses you know, we'd like to get paid, but if there's that one time we're not getting paid, we got to make sure our money's right. Because if I wasn't in a good financial spot, there's nothing I could do, right? I'm like, I'm losing money because that sale I thought I was going to get is not there. So that's where, you know, it comes into, I'm like, hey, you have to do the right thing. And then I did invite him to one of the games because he's literally the only uh, Miami Dolphin fan I know because the Dolphins, is, they're just not good. You know, they're getting maybe a little better with you. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I did invite him. I said, hey, man, it's like, hey, would you like to go? Um, so that helps out, you know, make sure he's in the contact because now I'm like, he kind of feels like he has to help me out. So he sent me his cousin who's getting uh, uh, pre-approved right now. He had some credit issues, but to make sure that all these people are sending you more business, especially if you help them out, you know, be able to get something. So that that's where it's important. And so that's, our whole section on time blocking and maybe putting out the task. You guys should create one of these yourselves just to make sure that, you know, you stay on task. And what am I supposed to do today? I'm like, all right, this, then you never really have to look at it. Right. So let me uh, jump back in here. All right. So, so it didn't, uh, it didn't show up. So, but um, so your 411, so you guys have a 411, right? It looks like this. Uh, I have it in the other sheet. Are you guys supposed to print out your sheets or not? Usually, if we're all in class, we just hand them out. But uh, I don't know. It's a little four one one. All right. 
But you guys played that for 4 one right, before? I, I have. All right, has everybody filled this out? Do you guys know what this is? So it's this sheet here. So basically what this sheet does is says, hey, you know what? I need to put stuff down on paper, right? And so when you first fill this out the first time, that's it's going to change later down the road because it gives you a nice little roadmap and it should be something you look at every day, right? So maybe you have this set up to, it's on your desk every day. You look at it and I'm like, all right, so my goals are X. I'm like, monthly goals are, are this. All right, what are my weekly goals? You'll be able to go through there and figure out where I need to be. So do you guys have any goals by the end of the year? Throw them out there. Who has a goal for the end of the year? What do you got? I'm gonna start calling on you people. Any goals? I would like to have another listing before the end of the year. Yeah, there you go. You gotta make sure you put that down. It's, so it's, it's kind of an affirmation to see it over and over again. I'm like, oh, I gotta do this. Oh, I gotta do this. Just to make sure you have that there. Harash, what do you got? What, do you, what kind of goal do you want at the end of the year? At least make one listing. Yeah, absolutely. So you're going to have to figure out how you're going to get there, right? So we can put the end goal, but we're going to have to break it down in smaller goals. Uh, Megan, what do you got? I want to master my knowledge of contracts. Yes. No, absolutely. And that's one of the things if you should know that contract inside and out is because it, it becomes very important because you don't want to have your client's liability. You don't have your liability and your broker's liability because you didn't understand it. And what are you going to say? Oh, I, I didn't know. I'm like, no, you should know. You should know the contract inside and out before you even start selling real estate, right? Because it's just, it's, it becomes a liability issue, you know, and I just, everybody wants to sue something. So that, that's pretty important too. So you should probably put that as a goal too. And it should probably be all your guys' goal as well. It's like, hey, you know, this is our goal. And then let's take a look at, so that's our annual goal. I'm like, all right, by the end of the year, we want to be able to understand that we know this contract inside and out. So if we take a look at it, I'm like, all right, what's our monthly goal? I'm like, what do you guys think on a monthly goal? All right, Al, what do you think on a monthly goal? Get a couple leads a week. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's one of the things is where if you get a couple of leads a week, what if that couple of leads a week turns out to a couple of lead, uh, leads every, you know, every day? And what if that comes out to be like every hour you're getting all these different leads? Like, oh, that's that's good. So, you know, be able to put that monthly goal in place, that's yeah, going to help out. So, Vilma, what do you got? Yeah, I was going to say appointments. Yeah, appointments are important. So, but you got to put a goal on how many appointments you're going to put for the for the month. Is it one appointment? Is it 10? Is it 50? What is that goal? Four, at least. So four, so that's one appointment a week. Is that doable? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely, that's doable. You know, and what if it's, I don't know about four appointments a day, that could be a lot, but it is possible. You have your... Ducks in a row. So, all right. And then, so now you got to put your weekly goals. And I'm like, you got to put your weekly goals. I'm like, week one. I'm like, all right, what's week one goal? I'm like, all right, I want to contact at least 50 people. I'm like, all right, cool. If I contact 50 people, what does week two look like? If I contact 50 people, I may have three appointments. I may have two appointments. I may have five appointments. And you kind of want to put that goal down the week. And then, so week one, I contact 50 people. And then week two, if you take a look here, week two, I'm like, all right, I want to take five appointments. Week three, I want to make sure I have two or three in contract, you know, maybe one in contract. Week four, I'm like, hey, that could be a closing, right? So if you have week four, I'm like, hey, I want one closing. I want three under contract, two under contract and go that route. So you guys should fill this out and look at it and then you'll adjust it as the, the weeks or months go by. And then you keep updating it and then your goals keep on moving higher and higher. So let's say my goal for the end of the year is one, year, one unit. So one house, the goal at the end of next year, maybe it's 10 houses, right? Or maybe it's a financial goal. I'm like, hey, my goal here is to be debt-free 
And what does that debt free look like is I got to make five grand a month, 10 grand a month, 20 grand a month. And how do I get there? I'm like, Hey, I need to make 60 calls at hundred calls, 10 calls. I need to do four open houses. You have to put that guideline out just to make sure that you can hit those goals. And I hope that makes sense to you guys. Cause you got to put the work in in order to make sure it works. Right. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's, that's, you just got to put it down on paper and then you got to hold yourself accountable. And then we'll talk about having an, uh, accountability partner later down the road as well. So that'll be in our, in our system to talk about. So we're going to get to my next section. Um, you guys have any questions on this part? All right. So here's, I think it's supposed to look a little better on like, it's just supposed to look a little better, but because it was on a Mac, it doesn't look that good. <laughs> so uh, let me get a quick. All right. So this picture kind of puts everything in perspective, right? So commit to the 80-20 principle, right? And if you heard of the 80-20 rule, right? It kind of does, like it works out everywhere, right? It's not really a defined, but it's more like a generality and it works. So do you guys, have you ever heard of that principle before? Uh, yeah, it's pretty popular. Yeah, absolutely. It's been around for generations, right? We learned it in school and, you know, and it works out in, you know, in the office too. So you got, <laughs> you got 20% of your office producing 80% of the results, right? So that gets transpired and, uh, and it comes down to you as well. So it's the Pareto principle. So the 80-20 principle and it helps you prioritize the focus on what's important. And you discover that 20% of your activities yield 80% of your results. So that makes sense, right? So let's say, all right, I got a hundred, you know, we'll use a hundred minutes, right? I got a hundred minutes in a day to do work. And I only use a hundred because a hundred is really easy to use. So I got a hundred minutes in a day. All right. If I spend, you know, it's like 20 of those minutes doing, let's say hardcore lead generation stuff that's going to result in something better. Even if you, even if you don't have a great conversion, but that 20% or that 20 minutes of hard lead generation is going to help you out. Right. And if you split that up, so let's say, Hey, 12 minutes of lead generation with eight minutes of follow-up, that's going to outdo doing 80 minutes of social media, taking pictures in front of a house. Like, Hey, like I, here's my selfie. Right. So that's what this real principle really talks about is to be able to say, hey, what are my, what are my 20% efforts? And when we're talking about 20% efforts, we're talking about what is the efforts that are going to make you result in 80% of your business, right? So we're calling these the big rocks. I love the big rocks, the big rocks analogy. Let me see in this whole scheme where the big rock actually goes or can I talk about it now? I think I can talk about it now. Oh, I think I can. So anyway, this is my first time looking at this whole, uh, you know, being inside of the script. I'm very anti-scripty when it comes to this. I don't really follow the rules a lot, but I, I'm here to make sure that you guys understand how you can grow your business and be more efficient at it. And I like using this analysis analogy as well. It's like, all right, so we had an agent here. You know what a FISBO is, right? For sale by owner. Here in a great state of Nevada and the city of Las Vegas, Let's just say FISBO, um, they're not the greatest return on your investment because people are just locked in. Hey, I'm going to sell my own house because I could sell my own house. I'm like, okay, go ahead. All right. I got agents that can't even sell their own house, but you, Mr. Uh, FISBO, you're going to sell your own house. Okay. Have at it. <laughs> so here's the problem is, all right, you can have 80% of your effort into something. So let's say, all right, I got a tree, right? A big tree. I got a big tree and I'm going to put 80% of my effort into knocking that down. Right. So you need the tools in place and that 80%. So let's say he's trying to knock down that big tree with a baseball bat. He's putting all the effort into it. Right. But he's not going to knock it down with a baseball bat. He just not, unless he hits it really hard. You know, this is bonds, you know, bonds going to hit it hard, but no. And then you have another guy who's going to put, 20% of his effort into something using a tool that'll match what he's trying to do, he's going to use an ax. So there's a good chance that 20% effort 
going to knock down the tree. And I, hopefully that makes sense is what you're doing. You may be putting a lot of effort into social media, but you may not get the results that you need to get. You may get some results. Like when you're banging that tree, you're going to get some dents into that tree. It's a little bit easier if you had an ax, right? So, and that's, and that's what this whole principle is about is make sure you're doing the 20% effort. That's going to be, that's going to be maximizing your, your results. You know, it's into the big rock thing. So let me tell you what this whole big rock. Have you guys heard of this big rock thing? Yes, no, maybe so. I maybe have not. in bold. Yeah, in bold, right? Anyone else? Yeah, so it's a very, it's a good principle. I, I really like that principle a lot. So what makes the, the big rock thing, so it's basically if you take a, let's say a Home Depot um, bucket, which I bought a lot when I was moving because that was the only thing I could use to move stuff around. So you buy this Home Depot bucket. It's a five gallon bucket, right? With the orange bucket. And then you put your big rocks in there. Like the ones that are just gonna, you're gonna put like 10 of them in there. Cause that's all that fits. Right. So you put those in there and that's, you know, it fills it up. Right. So that's your big rocks. But did you fully utilize that whole bucket? No. Cause there's air gaps in place, right? There's gaps in place in there. So how would we make it even better is let's say we get some smaller rocks and gravel. We'll throw it inside that bucket and it's going to fill up some of those gaps. Right. And I'm like, all right, cool. All right. Now I got a, you know, I got a better five gallon uh, thing to move a pail, but you know, we can get some really fine sand and drop it in there. Right. So we drop the fine sand in there and it's going to take all their crevices out of there. So, Hey, so now we have this bucket full. I'm like, all right, cool. Now it works out. I'm like, cause it's all full, but Hey, wait, I'll be like, what if I just use the fine sand at the beginning and I fill it up? Right. Like, yeah, that's a smart idea. Let's do that. Fill it up to the very top of fine sand. Every single bit of it is full, right? It's full, but it's a whole bunch of little stuff. So you can't fit the gravel in there as well because you know, it's already full. And then you can't fit the big rocks, which are your big effort, 20% efforts in there. So basically what you're doing is you're on Snapchat all day long and that's going to fill your bucket. Is it going to get you business? Maybe one or two dealsies, maybe. It's just not going to do anything for you. And that's what we're talking about, that 20% effort where we're using the big rocks, which is your big stuff. You put that in there. Sure, you could do the other stuff as well that's going to help you get to that point where you need to be a successful agent is... You're going to have to fill it up that way because if you use all the fine sand all the way to the top, there's no room for all the other stuff. You're Snapchatting away, but are you really making money? And then also, if you're just using your, hey, I'm lead gen, lead gen, lead gen, lead gen, lead gen, which I did with my Craigslist, if I can't convert them, I'm just sitting there, I'm just telling everyone, hey, I got 600 leads today, you know, 600 leads this month. What'd you get? How many closes did you get? I'm like, it doesn't matter. I had 600 leads. Exactly. So you need a combination of the both. And hopefully that makes sense to you guys to make sure you got to do the work early on. And is that 20% effort results in that big picture thing? Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. I hope so say, so, yeah, that makes sense. I love it. Like, man, where do you come up with this stuff? I didn't. It's right here. It's all the KW way. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Um, it's the first time I heard it. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty powerful. I really like that a lot. It really helped out. So anyways, but so that's the 80, the 2080 uh, effort and the 80, 20 principles just sits pretty much on everything. Um, it is what it is. It's just, I guess it's math. So. All right. So move to the next part. So set your object objectives. All right. So these are the things that are going to be put in place for you that, you know, it's, it's going to help you grow your business. You know, you want to make sure you grow your business in the right way because you can grow your business in the wrong way. And it just doesn't work out. Like me, I kind of grew my business in the wrong way a couple of times, you know, it's like Craigslist was where I was getting it all done through Craigslist. I'm like, yeah, I don't need anything else. I don't need a CRM. I don't need any of that stuff. What happened was, 
Craigslist changed what they were doing. They didn't allow me to use HTML or send a hyperlink back to my website. And I was done. I literally just stopped. The day they changed it, business just stopped. Zero, just crashed. Nothing. So I had a three strategy on myself. What do I need to do? And that's where I came up with this whole agent to agent referral thing that, you know, it's been working really well, but everyone else is doing it too. So now it's making it a little tougher to get things done. So, yeah. So you have to create, you know, what's, what's your identifiable goal, right? So we've talked about the goals before. You got to set your weekly goals into daily objectives, right? So I might, my weekly goal is to have two appointments. Can you just say, hey, world, I want two appointments and the world grants it to you. That's not how it works. Theoretically, some people do have that kind of luck, but you know, it's not me. So, but you should also have that affirmation as well. You know, I'm like, hey, this week, two appointments. This week, two appointments. Then that turns around to this week, two contracts. This week, two contracts. And then it could be like, this week is two closings, two closings. Then it goes to three, then it goes to four, right? Then go down that route. So you have to have something that's put your goals in place where they're weekly goals and how to get to those weekly goals. And if that weekly goal is two appointments, I'm like, how am I going to get there? You got to figure out it's going to take phone calls, right? It's going to take lead gen, lead follow up. You know, you have to go down that route. So, and I, actually, one of the guys who just put an offer in yesterday. You know, it was a lead that he's like, I'm tired of losing. I just sent him another message say, hey, man, I think the market has softened a little bit. Should we put an offer in? We put an offer in, but we just still lost badly. Yeah, it happened. So we'll try again. And he did send me another property too to look at. So, and then you have to take a look at what are your metrics? You know, what are the metrics? How will you measure your progress towards attaining each goal you set, right? You can set a goal and not hit them. And that's going to be all right. But you want to say, hey, what did I do wrong? You have to revisit it and say, hey, why did I not get that? Oh, because I didn't make my phone calls. Oh, I didn't call my sphere. And it was like, oh, I was like, I didn't realize I should have known the contract better, right? Because I was asked questions. I didn't understand the contract. So my client's like, yeah, we're going to maybe move on, right? So you have to make sure you can do those. Attainable. Do you have the correct system and tools in place to set up for success, right? So I could say, and that's where we go back to chopping down the tree is if we don't have the right tools or the right systems in place, we're not really doing anything. We look like we're doing a whole bunch, right? I'm like, hey, I got 2000 strokes into chopping down this tree. The tree's still sitting there, right? And you shouldn't be chopping down the trees. I'm just throwing it out there. It's the best thing I've come up with. So <laughs> you gotta make sure you get the right tools in place. And then purposeful, you know, I'm like, all right, I could set myself up. You want to make sure the goals are aligned with your weekly, monthly, and annual goals. So I'm like, you got to be purposeful of what you're doing. It's just the things that you put together have to flow on. Hey, is this is where I need to be? Is this going to help me get there? Sometimes you may have to go back to go forward, but at least it needs to be purposeful. Like, let's say, hey, I'm going to go see new houses every day. And I'm like, cool, that's good. That's going to be part of your repertoire, right? But it can't be your main focus every day, right? There are only so many houses you can look at, unless unless you were sitting there poaching. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying that's not a bad thing or a great thing, but anyway, poaching is like you're at the new home and somebody else is in there. Like, hey, what do you think of this? Shouldn't be doing that. You're gonna get in trouble, and they're probably really not gonna pay you. <laughs> so, all right, and make sure it's all done in a timely manner, right? It may be tough the first time. So let's say the first, you know, bold 100 where you call 100 people, you know, have 100 conversations. It, it may take a long time, but you'll get better at it just to make sure that you really, really understand what you're doing and make sure it's done in a timely manner because you can keep chopping that tree. I'm assuming after 10 years, chopping that tree with a baseball bat, it does fall down. I'm assuming, but you got to make sure you do it in a timely manner. So, um, all right. So now that we finished through those set of your objectives. I think you guys should eventually revisit this, you know, and have it readily available next to you, right? Like 
have it next to your computer or inside of your computer, inside of your laptop bag, pull it out and say, Hey, these are my goals. Or am I, or am I hitting my goals? Um, you know, it has to be there. Right. So something you should get in a habit of doing so you can see what it is. And at least you understand where you need to be. So, and then, so time blocking. So it's pretty much we covered what we covered earlier and I showed you my time blocking and what I have set up, what the tasks are in there. So you gotta make sure you put your, your big rocks first, right? So make sure you block that and you make sure you put that stuff in there. And that's gonna be your lead gen, the lead follow-up. Those are gonna be your biggest rocks in there. So you can be great at closing a house, but if you have no leads to close, what are you really doing? I don't know. You can be great at a contract, but if you don't have any leads to go over the contract, what are you really doing, right? So those are the things that you need to make sure that you have in place and you got to make sure you put those big rocks up first. And there's time to go to houses and do social media, do a video post. I got tons of videos on mine and I just slowly drip them out, right? Slowly drip them out. I have content for days, right? You know, and I love the stories and I love the YouTube reels. And I think when I went to go teach at your office, we did the YouTube stuff. I'm like, man, there's some crazy stuff in there now. So it's really cool. They're doing their own real thing as well. Uh, the reels are really nice. So time blocking, make sure you time block it. And if you need to move stuff around, you know, it's understandable, but you have to have a nice guideline, right? Just to make sure that things go right. And to keep you accountable as well. So, anyway, so that's time blocking. You guys have questions about time blocking or what it is? Have you heard that before? You heard that before, right? Yes. I'm going to say yes. Thank you, Roma. So, all right. Create accountability. That's going to be a pretty good topic here. Um, so let me, let me read you something that from the one thing that Gary had wrote. So from the one thing, Gary cites is Dr. Gail Matthews found out that individuals who wrote down their goals are 39.5% more likely to succeed. Wow, really? Did you get that? I'm like, all right, I'm between me and you. That doesn't sound like a big number, right? But hey, you know what? That's 39.5%. And put it down. All right, hey, I'm going to get one house sold by the end of the year. You're like 40% chance of getting that's right. You know, that's better than any Vegas odds. I can tell you that. But here's even a better odd that you can get going on is it says individuals who wrote down their goals and shared a progress report with a friend were more than 76.7% more likely to succeed. Let me reread that for you. It says individuals who wrote down their goals and shared progress reports with a friend were 76.7% more likely to succeed. So you can write it down and you can look at it. And I'm like, all right, cool. That's going to give you a 40% chance of uh, actually attaining that goal. And that's still a good number. In baseball, you'd be the you'd be the batting champion, right? Exactly. Basketball, not so much. It'd be better than Shaq on the free throws, but that's about it. Um, so, but if you write them down and you share a progress report with a friend or a colleague or even a uh, productivity coach would probably be your best then it's more than 76% likely that it's going to be successful. So that's the really important part of uh, being able to be on the accountability. One is to write the goal down. If you do that, I'll be happy with you guys right now. Say, write the goal down and look at it every day. Say, hey, I will get that one sale. I'll get that 10 sale. I'm cool with that too. But if you could share that with somebody else and be able to get that done, that's, that's going to be better for you. You know, it's, it's your money that you're taking home. And you know, if you sell one more unit, it's not going to personally help me other than, hey, I'm happy for you. But if it helps you to do one more unit, it's going to work out great. Out real great. I got I to gotta say, um, for, for me, I'm, I'm really new at this. I'm, I Technically, I don't even have my license number yet. I just recently passed my, my exam. But um, I've had, I've, uh, as far as telling someone, I've kept my, my son kind of in my loop about this for like the last several months because kind of had my eyeball on, on getting uh, going on this. And I've set myself like the ultimate goal was just to get here, get licensed. But right. all the steps that I had to take in between, thank you, 
John, um, all the steps that I took in between, like I knew I was like, well, you know, this is like, you know, six, eight months away. I've got so much other stuff I got going on, but I set, set little goals and, and realistic timeframes for myself. And I have met every single one of them. And what really did help me was, uh, was was keeping my son kind of a part of it because he's like kind of been cheering me on this whole time because I work a full time job and I have kids and a bunch of other things going on. Sure. And um and 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 I've met and, and I've met every single goal. However, I never wrote anything down. I never even took notes to prepare for the exam. But I was so uh, immersed in it, like several hours a day, almost every single day. And everywhere I turned, I kind of had something there reminding me. Of, of, of keeping my eye on the prize. So, so it's absolutely helped me kind of keep, keep things in focus and, and, and setting this stuff like uh, in, in smaller portions, you know, and, and, and kept everything subjective and realistic. It really helped me. So I, I, I think uh, what you're explaining right now helps really, it, uh, I can totally identify with that because it's helped me get here this far and I foresee it helping me in the future as well. So thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, absolutely. So, and that's the important part is, you know, if it's not written down, but you do know, and you look at it every day, you know, it's, you know, it's really fantastic. You know, it's, it helps you grow as a person as well. So it's, you know, we have our, uh, you know, we have our charts that we put together and it's like, Hey, here's our dream board, you know, where you put everything that you feel like you want to get to point is like, I, I've never created one because I already know what I really wanted out of everything. And then I live in a place where it's a 3D full life view of what it is. So I see it three to four times a day and a day, I mean, a week, you know, when I'm on my mountain bike trail, you know, I'm able to see like Bill Foley's house, you know, I'm able to see, you know, Tom Brady's lot, you know, I'm able to see these things. And, you know, in these houses, the lots alone are 6 million. And then when they put the house on there, they're 25, 30 million. I'm like, that could be something I'm like, Hey, you know what? I may strive to be that, but where I am now with my new house, I'm like, I'm pretty happy with that myself. Cause you know, it's everything I've ever wanted, you know, like it's like everything I've ever really wanted is like, I've always wanted a single uh, story home with a, a three car garage. And then with an infinity pool that goes out to the Vegas strip, which is super cool. It's not there yet, but you know, they're still building it, but that that's been my end goal. And um, so, yeah, I'm pretty happy where I'm at. And if I'm there forever, you know, I'd be pretty happy with that. But if I need to sell it and move on, you know, I'll be happy with that as well. So it's one of those things where I get to look at stuff every day. And I am, I am truly blessed that like my accountability partner is someone I'm married to. So she, um, she's pretty sharp. She's pretty sharp on a lot of things and just, really keeps me accountable and we try to work together once in life and apparently she would have fired me four times so uh we didn't get past more than uh about two months so uh she is now a a nurse now so but yeah she's all over me but and the cool part is i'm accountable for her as well as i make sure that she's on track of her stuff just to make sure that we're all on the same page and you know it's like the funny part is is just I have this whole sheet for her with her down payment money because the first time we bought, you know, the last house we bought, she was supposed to be, Hey, what are you good for? I need you to be good for 10 grand. Are you good for 10 grand? She's like, yes, I can get it done. When we're building new houses, like eight, nine months. Right. So she's able to come up with it. She came up with five and I'm like, and I didn't write her. And I'm like, you know, it's, is what it is. So this time on this new house, I'm like, look, I need 25 grand from you. Can you get it done in the next nine months? And she's like, yes. So now I'll, I'm doing a lot better. I got a spreadsheet. I got upload updates. I'm like, Hey, I need that money today. What do you got? What do you got? So we are on pace because, you know, it's just cause she's not, if I wasn't accountable, she would have spent her money on other stuff, but she spends all my money anyway. So it is what it is, but you know, so that's where we are. So accountability, it helps out a lot, you know, just to make sure, you know, you share your goals with somebody and they have somebody to, to kind of have the same common goals. I'm like, Hey, you know what? I want to sell 50 houses a year. Somebody else is like, that's a great goal. I only want to sell one. Yeah, that may not strive together, you know, but if you can get somebody like, hey, I want to sell 10 houses. I want to sell 10 houses a year. I'm new. You're new. Let's grow together. And that could work out as well as, you know, as well. So yeah, make sure you share your short-term and long-term goal to somebody and, you know, just make sure everybody's on the same page and you can share it across multiple people, you know, 
Like I tell everyone, I'm like, look, hey, my main goal on my new house is I need an infinity pool. I didn't realize in today's market, it's so expensive. So I projected it was around 80, 90,000, but apparently now it's in the 150 to 200,000 range. So now I have to readjust what kind of infinity pool I want. But, uh, you know, but I've been telling everyone it's an affirmation to make sure I'm like, hey, I just want to sit there on Taco Tuesday, having a taco and looking at the strip. So that's my end goal, you know, Taco Tuesday. So, and then plan your check-ins, right? And I'm like, hey, if you're not checking in with people, I'm like, hey, you know, we're nine months now down the road. And I'm like, uh, you need to be at X and you check in at month eight. And I'm like, hey, where are you? And he goes, oh, I'm not even close. I'm like, yeah, should check in in month two, three, and four. At least you can make an adjustment. You know, like here's a really cool example is my friends don't plan on buying a house until March and in March and uh, April. And I told them, I said, hey, you still need to talk to a lender today because there might be some stuff you need to work on. It's better you work on it today than work on it when your lease is up. So just to get that process started and check in to make sure everybody's on the right part. Makes sense. Yeah, so when and where you check in. So like if you're accountability partner, you could do it via text, via phone call. I love the phone call because I like hearing people's voices. I'm a talker for some odd reason. I talk a lot. And that's why I didn't do well in... And technology because I kept on talking. <laughs> yeah, it, it was uh, it was well, it was actually really fun because I thoroughly enjoy technology. So, but yeah, that's where we want to make sure that our, our accountability sits in there, just to make sure we're working with the right people and we get it in place. Oh, I actually skipped one. So that's where we were. So we'll skip back to uh, to being here. Be accountable. All right. So, you know, we've, we've, we'd hammer home the set the goals left and right. Right. So we've said, Hey, you got to set your goals. Cause if you don't have any goals, you just float through real estate. Like most people do. I'm like, Oh, I had a successful year. I'm like, really? I was like, yeah, I sold X amount of houses. I'm like, Oh, was that your goal? I didn't have one. So yeah, I, I did a great year. How many houses did you sell? I sold one. I'm like, oh, great. You know, if you say, hey, I had 10 houses I was going to sell, great. You get to eight or nine, I'm like, oh, I'm almost there. I was like, I got a more of a victory there. But hey, that, that's a lot further than I thought I would be, right? You know, and then some of you guys could just be, hey, my main goal is to transition out of my old job into this real estate career. So it's, it's one of those moves that you're going to have to make if you aren't doing that. Or you could still be doing it on the side, but it's a full-time job. Like literally, it's a full-time job day in and day out. If you have flexibility at the other career, you know, it's fine. You know, you can do that. But if you're all in, you know, make sure you have a good exit strategy. And then you also have to make sure you have the right amount of money to do it. Just You just have to make sure you're financially stable to do it. Because if you jump over, you may not be able to get what you need to get in order to, to survive. So you got to make sure you got a plan at least six months, seven months of, you know, savings to be able to do it, but you got to make sure you got a goal and a plan. Cause if you just have a goal with no plan or a plan with no goal, it's not going to really get anywhere. And you got to make sure you do the, the key activities to make sure that everybody's, you know, you're accountable, you know, it's like, Hey, I got to get this, but I'm, I'm not willing to do the work. Like I want to sell 50 houses a year, but I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to lead you in. I'm like, okay. I get you don't want to cold call because I don't like cold call. I hate it. I really like hate it, hate it. I don't really do any cold calling. The only cold calling I do is I call other agents. And there, you know, I'm coming through and say, hey, what does your market look like? Like, who is this? I'm like, yeah, this is, this is Al from Keller Williams, Las Vegas. I just want to know how your market's looking. So, but calling out of like, you know, expired stuff, that's just not me. Um, you know, and you can pick what you want to do. I don't door knock. I would love the door knock, but yeah, not really a lot of people opening the door to a six foot guy. Uh, yeah, even though his suit may be Gucci, but still, who is this guy? I mean, here in Vegas, we just don't open the door to people because it's just weird. I'm like, you don't need to be here. <laughs> I don't know your areas, maybe, but you know, it is what it is. I tried it once though. We got one open on what, 40 doors? Took five hours, four hours in there. But uh, yeah, it works for some people. But yeah, and make sure your results are measurable, right? I'm like, hey, you know what? 
are they measurable? I'm like, all right, cool. I did sell two homes this year. I'm like, cool. I sold 10 homes this year. I'm like, cool. I got to that point. Did I do it right? I don't know. That's where you got to evaluate the process. I'm like, great. So like we had that girl in our office who was calling Fizbo's. She called Fizbo's, those for sale by owners every Monday from nine o'clock to 12 for eight years. Eight years, Monday, calling Fizbo's every Monday, right? She got one sale out of the whole eight years of calling every Monday. And that's that that process where you got to figure out, I'm like, hey, is this bat going to really knock down this tree? Probably not. And then she got rid of that. So she stopped doing those Fizbo's calls because she had to evaluate her, her process. And she also made adjustments, because which is the next step in there, just to make sure that she was doing it right. She was wasting three hours every Monday doing those things. It's just, you have to evaluate. And she didn't understand it until we went to a, uh, mastermind and we started we started asking questions what are you doing that's not really generating you business but you think it is then we went through all of our actions and that was when the action she came up with so you know make sure the things you're doing are helping you grow where you need to grow right so and you know there can be some lost leaders in there right you can have a couple of things you do do because you just have to do them you know it's you know we call those lost leaders so hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And then, you know, you got to make the adjustments. And then once you make the adjustments, set up the goal and it's one big giant circle. And you got to make sure you're accountable for all this. You got to make sure someone makes you accountable because it's, it's not static. It's very dynamic. Like, hey, today's market, because there's not a lot of homes, I'm a whole, uh, I'm a, a pro buyer's agent but hey you know what i really need to change my dynamics and become a pro uh seller's agent because those are going to be a little easier to move versus the buyers right so be able to adjust that just be able to time the market i'm the worst at time in the market i think literally the worst so if it's a buyer if a buyer's market i got a ton of listings if it's a seller's market i got tons of buyers and covid really brought that out is Right when we went into COVID, I think I had like seven to eight listings. And then they shut down and nobody was looking at my listings. And I'm like, man, this sucks. This is horrible. And then when they opened back up, boom, they were gone. But then it's hard to get another listing again. Like literally it was like the hardest thing. So, you know, I'm always on the wrong side. And it's like, now I'm just heavy buyers, especially even this week. I had like four new buyers this week that are all willing to throw offers in. And I like that. So, but... Yeah. So does that make sense to you guys in there? It's like, hey, you got to adjust it. You got to make sure the activities you're doing are doing right. And they're just not random activities that may feel right. Right. And I keep going back to this Instagram, taking pictures in the house. I see it a lot. I see it a lot, a lot, a lot. You know, I, I see it a lot. And it's cool. You can do that. And it looks great, you know, and you can do some live, um, you know, like Facebook lives and well, and, you know, inside of Instagram as well. And Snapchat too, because I, I kind of like the whole Snapchat thing as well is you take a picture of what you're doing. Like I'll take a picture right now. I'm like, Hey, I'm in class. And then it kind of sits there for 24 hours. So somebody, I'm like, oh, what is that Elby guy doing? I haven't heard from him. What is he doing? And then he says, Oh, look at that. He's teaching. I'm like, cool. Maybe still in real estate. Or if I'm in a house, one snap, bam, same thing with Instagram stories, bam. It's only there for 24 hours, but Hey, you know, at least it's something to give somebody a chance to look at it. And that's, that's that. 80% of the business where you do a little bit in there and hopefully it gets some traction later down the road. So it ends up being you're on top of mind. And that's the, that's the end goal is to be on top of mind of people. When people think real estate, they think of your area, they want to, they want to call you and think of you and buy stuff from you or sell from, from you. Cause if they think of somebody else, they're in the supermarket, they'll see, you know, little John on the little uh, card at your grocery store. And I'm like, Hey, you know what? I may call that guy. Probably not, but you know, you never know. Somebody switched all my stuffs around. All right, we're gonna go to this next session. We already went over that part here, so um, you know what? Um, we're gonna be starting to run out of time because I talk a lot, but let's figure out some things real quick. As in, uh, do you guys have any recaps? I know somebody said that you know that that accountability stuff hit home. 
what do you got? What else do you guys got? Any kind of, hey, what can I do today that's going to help my business grow? Uh, for the accountability, right? So I did actually share the goal with my friends. Like, you know, uh, when I got my license, hey, you know, uh, they said you do pretty good in Porsche. Why don't you go to jump to the, uh, the real estate? I said, you know, I pretty much cap in the, you know, I can't make more money in the, in the Porsche anymore. And in, in, in because, you know, that's the, uh, that's a cap, right? So I want to expand it to the next goal, which is actually a lot more uh, uh, challenge for me, which is I love. Um, so I showed my friend that, hey, you know, after three, after three, four years later, I have to make half a million dollars a year, which is achievable. And I did share the goal in a text message with a couple of my friends and they really nice friend to me. And uh, they also work in the sales and they support me. So I, I, I did tell them that. So uh, it's, it's for me, it's a, uh, you know, it's a, uh, uh, I want to make sure that works, you know, because I shared that with my very, very good friend already. So yes, that's, that's my case. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. And then, you know, make sure before you leave Porsche, if you do end up leaving is make sure you're still in contact with everyone you ever sold a car to, because those could be great buyers down the road, or they could be great buyers today. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, so, you know, when I was uh, trying to go to the, uh, the real estate business uh, about a year ago, um, that moment, my mindset is not selling cars. My mindset actually uh, making uh, connections. So that's my goal for the um, the last whole year. So it doesn't matter if they're buying car or not. I still very good with uh, the term. And if they buy a car or not, I still have a very good contact and helping them um, on different situation. Um, yeah. So luckily, they they treat me really really nice too. A lot of customer did, you know, even buying an expensive gift to me, even though you know uh, uh, I, I I didn't sell them a car or something. They still buy some uh, in some uh, gifts. So, you know, it's good relationships. Like, for example, like, you know, one of my um, client that uh, 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 I didn't even sell him a car, but I, uh, he's feel bad because he buy from other places because we don't have the inventory here. Right. And that's going to be a big yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's still calling me, hey, you know, how's everything going? I said, oh, my dad just passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I, I will be there. I cannot be there. So, uh, you know, it's okay. You know, don't have to be there because my mom is still, you know, in a, not in a, uh, you know, doesn't want to meet any people yet. So no, no, no. I come in to help you, and there's something I can do. And imagine he's um he's a big boss, like you know, trying to uh, set up a multi million dollars, like two hundred two million dollars of business here. And but he also reached out to to help help me. So it's like you kind know, of. It's a, a kind of a connection, you know, between uh, 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 me and the client. Going, it's like we, it's like a friend, but just friends. So that's my 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 uh, uh, goal is not just selling cars, uh, not just selling houses, but uh, make a connection with people. I yeah, think absolutely. Yeah, I think that helps in the mindset. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then you give them such great uh, service that you know it's really funny. Is like we get people move here all the time, and then when if they move into a condo you know, they need to put like, who's your emergency contact? They put me down, you know, they always ask me, say, hey, is it cool your emergency contact? And I'm like, yeah, I don't go ahead. And it's like, we don't know anybody else. And it's like, you know, you seem pretty good. So we'll just use you. And then, you know, build that relationship. Like we had somebody from Texas, they had a pool during the summer and they knew I just sold my house. And they said, hey, you guys could come use my pool because nobody's using it for the next three months because we're not going to be there. It's just sitting there. And I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. So, you know, it's, it's more than selling houses, just having a good relationship with your clientele because they're going to be your biggest, um, you know, advocates later down the road. Yeah, I believe so. And they're really loyal to you too. Um, it doesn't matter what you do, they, they support you. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, Melissa, did you learn anything? Uh, maybe she's on a phone call. So I actually... Uh, Harish, did you learn anything new or anything that popped up? Yes, I did. You know, I mean, even giving us a good examples, how you did, and that gives me a good understanding, you know, how to proceed further, like you did. Yeah, absolutely. So well, that's good. Yes. Al, did you get anything out of this too? Hey, Albie. Yes. Um, I had a question that you 
stated a story about your successes with Craigslist and you had nurtured or you had generated, you know, an amazing amount of leads. And you said that one of the, the downfalls is that you just didn't have the ability to nurture these leads um, moving forward. Looking back at it now, what would you have done differently? Oh, like a million different things. Like I literally would be retired. Um, I would probably be working with Velma over there as a VC. So here's my, here's my thing is I was young. I didn't understand that I needed to nurture things. I like if and my mentality had always been is like, if you weren't ready to do something today, I don't really want to do business with you. Right. Cause I don't want to call you like six months down the road. I'm like, Hey man, you still looking for a house? You need to be ready today. You call me today. I'm like, Hey, I'm approved. I got cash. Let's get this done today. I'm like, cool. That's what I like. I like that. I didn't know anything about that extra stuff. Right. So here's a really mm. cool part, but not cool part. This really hurts later down the road is so after that. So once Craigslist really shut me down, I still had most of those people in my system. Right. Cause they all came in through emails. So I had a team of two and I said, Hey, uh, they're like, Hey, we got to call leads. Who are we calling? And I said, honestly, I was like, let me print out this list. Start calling these people. So they called what 400, 500, it had to be more than that over a week of calling all these old people. And, you know, a lot of these numbers aren't real anyways, going through that list. So after that first two weeks of them calling all these leads to see if anybody wanted to buy or look, we had missed 32 people that already had bought. And that, that was hurts. just on two weeks worth of work. <laughs> we had already bought with somebody else because I didn't follow up. And this is probably a year after ish those people are already gone. I'm like, oh, Jesus, horrible, right? So then I launched a new website because I'm like, hey, I'm going to launch some more stuff. So I still had that database. I just sent everyone an email in my database from those emails, right? So I had, I had um, exported them out and I put them into my email system. Then I emailed them all out. And the only thing I really cared about at that time was I really wanted people to just click on my new website that I just launched because you know, I've been playing a whole Google game SEO stuff all my life is, you know, it is what it is. So I wanted Google to know that I just launched this new website and I already got 500 people looking at it in the first hour or two. So I launched that email out and I had this guy respond back. He goes, Hey, I'm still looking for a house. So I'm like, I'm looking for this, this, and this. So I looked up his name and I'm like, okay. And then I looked through my system of all my emails. I'm like, wow, this is from two years ago. And this guy is looking to buy the same exact house he was two years ago. So we ended up closing him almost two years later out of that list. So there was a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, but had I been more understanding of how to do things, I would be really on top of it. Um, like really on top of it. So I, I give you a quick, quick understanding how things work now is, so I'm still in the SEO stuff. I just haven't got a lot of SEO going now because with Zillow and the, uh, you know, Redfin taking a lot of my stuff in the area. So it's really hard to rank in the first page or on page two. But the, the leads I do get in, I used to worry about trying to call them right away because I'm like, hey, speed of service, right? Call them yeah. right away. So now I have them come into my system and it goes through a third party and they dial for me. And the only thing they're asking them is, hey, I was like, do you have an agent? Are you looking to buy or sell? And then they, and if they are looking to buy or sell, what are they looking for? And they give a little synopsis then it sends me an email and a text message say hey this guy just came across this is what he's looking for then i'm able to call him so i'm not wasting my time chasing down ghost numbers or repeat business and the really cool part on that is you know outside of command but so i have this thing called agent legend where all the ones that they hadn't reached it automatically sends them on the long drip which is like once a month hey is there something i'm that we're not giving you that you're looking for are you still in the market for a house? Are you looking to buy or sell? The market has changed. That's on a drip. So that's an extended drip because even though I learned how to get a CRM and got CRM working, mm -hmm. I still had, I had great success 30 days out, but I had horrible success in that two to six months, a year out because it's just, I don't know. I just, I just couldn't see it that way. So this helps me out in that long-term stuff as well is, um, but I, yeah, I really struggled on that to be able to get to that long term. But 45 days, 30 days in, you know, it works out really well for me. So it was it was more focus driven towards the people that need to act now. And then you outsourced essentially 
those contacts that contacted you initially, but then uh, you didn't want to spend the time or weren't, didn't have the time to spend with them to ask them these questions about where you, where you positioned, are you looking to buy or sell? So yeah. So that was a more now, effective way of use of time, essentially yeah, for you. It's more effective time of use because when you're looking at internet leads, internet leads, you're probably looking, oh, I could, uh... yeah. So I just did a listing where I ran a Facebook ad on it and uh. yeah, you know, those Facebook and internet leads are a little rougher to go through. So you're looking at probably for every hundred leads, maybe you're getting one sale out of it. So out of those hundred leads. So I think I got 58 leads on that one that I ran for 50 bucks. Um, it was three people that we had contact our, uh, our lender. And out of those three people, we just had one close on their property on, I think last week was it last week or this week, man, the days are just going to get, I didn't even know we're in October. Uh, so it's a long game. You know, that game is long, but the really cool thing is like once SEO was really hitting. So I was, I throw some real numbers out there cause I'm an analytical guy. So in the olden days, before I had any of these, um, uh, these tools in place, I would close one SEO lead every six, you know, every six weeks. So in a given year, it would be about 10 to eight in there. And that's free organic stuff, all SEO driven in there. So then when I switched to um, Agent Legend and um, once I switched to that, that product, I was almost at a point where I'm actually closing two a month. So that increased my, uh, my, my income that way which was really good. And that ran for a good three years. I'm like, Hey, now that you're getting an extra 12 deals a year, it's free. And you put the least amount of effort into it. And the coolest thing is that speed of service is the fastest internet lead I closed on. It was, they contacted me on day one by day 14. I got a check for $23,000. That's how quick it is. that is quick. So that was yeah. my largest internet sale to close in the fastest amount of time from internet sale. And that was all automated service to be able to get to her, be able to talk to her. And she's a Grammy award winner. So it was like a win-win. I didn't know who she was though. I still don't know who she is. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great success though. Yeah, absolutely. And it was like, if I was hurting for money at that point in time, just to be able to convert that and have an extra $20,000 in my bank account, you know, 14 days later, that could change a lot of people's stuff, especially if I'm like, Hey, I'm drowning in debt. Hey, I need my next car payment, my next rental payment house payment, I'd be able to get you out. Unless your house payment is 20 grand, then I have no words for you. <laughs> That's gotta be a lot. So, yeah. All right, so yeah, any last recaps or aha? I think that's probably the most important parts of this. Um, we'll drop into the daily success habits. I didn't like this part at all. It's, you know, it's not really um, something, but you know, it's what we should be doing on this daily successful habits. I'm looking at my time. So we're make sure we're going to be closing up on time because you guys have valuable uh, time left in the rest of the day. And I do too. We got things to do. So to make sure the things that you should be doing it, you know, let's just make sure you're building your database. You got script practice, lead gen, contract practice. You know, you got to make sure your contracts, you know exactly what you're talking about. Because if you are lead genning, you know, you have to make sure I'm like, hey, if I put an offer on a house, is my earnest money gone? If I pull out, you got to know those answers. I'm like, hey, you know, your state's different than ours, but we could put X amount. We could put five days, 10 days, 12 days, 14 days, or we could say, hey, that earnest money is hard once you accept it. So you'd be able to know the contract there. And then here's another thing that, you know, came from Gary was like 20 conversations on your lead gen should get you one appointment. So that is just like the industry average is that, hey, 20 conversation gets you one appointment. So you figure, hey, I want to get one appointment uh, a week. That's 20 conversations. If I want two, I got to have 40. If I want three, you know, I, I got to have that. So you got to make sure you have that nailed down. So does that make sense to you guys on there? You got to make sure you do your lead gen, which is your big rock stuff. And it ties it all together to make sure that, hey, you're running a successful business. You could float your way through a successful business as well. It just, you know, whatever you want to do to make sure it works. Yeah, and here's the really cool part too is, 
you know, he's, he's our goals you should set to set your career on fire is like, Hey, I need, I need you to put 10 contacts in your database, you know, and we have command and it comes free with our, with being with Keller Williams. So it's not like, Hey, I got to spend extra money. I'm like, Hey, it's already there. It's already included with, you know, being with Keller Williams, make sure you have that in there. And you want to make sure you have that as 10 conversations, you know, set it up. It's like, Hey, I need to have 10 conversations a day, 10 conversations a week, but Hey, realistically, you want to get to that point. You have 10 conversations a day, 10 contacts, and then 10 handwritten notes. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of it, but you can do it. You can send it out to your past clients. You know, it looks really pretty, but if you get guys like me, um, I haven't checked my mail and why well, I checked my mail when I moved like three months, I just don't check my mail. This is everything so automated. It is what it is. So I just don't check my mail, but, uh, and then you got 10 home previews per week. Remember I was talking about, I'm like, Hey, get into groove, dress up the way you think you need to dress up. You know, there's no dress code in real estate. you could be flip-flops or you could be dressed, you know, in a nice Gucci suit. It doesn't matter. Whatever you feel that's going to be great for your clientele, but you know, business businesses usually, you know, it is what it is. It's just whatever it is. So it's like 90% of my outfit because it's always hot here. I got a vest with my, but I wear jeans but I wear fancy shoes. So, you know, it's cut off. I did wear slacks the other day because you have to know your clientele. So there's a certain clientele that I work with that they need me in a suit. So I was in a suit Monday. Was it Monday? I think it was Monday. Um, I didn't do the tie though. I just couldn't. It's just all these years in tech and I had to wear a tie. Who wears a uh, tie in tech? Yeah, this guy, because I was a director. That's why. <laughs> so anyways, but yeah, also make sure that, the best part about command, how, when's the last time you've been in command? Let me see some, some numbers. If you've never been in it, just say, Hey, I never been in it, but you should go do some command classes um, and see. And I think maybe I'll ask my office, the next command class I teach that I could send you guys a link and maybe you could pop into my command class. I think we're going to do a design class. Design's really cool. I like it a lot. Um, I'll ask my office if I can send you guys the link to our next class and then maybe you guys could jump in and take a look at it. But yeah, make sure you jump in your command. You can't break it. You just literally cannot break it. You could try, but you just can't break it. You know, we talk about scripts all day long. You know, you got to make sure you get the right scripts. Uh, if you need scripts, I think we have scripts all over the place. And, you know, some of the scripts that you can look at, you know, Try YouTube. You can look in YouTube and see some of those scripts. I think uh, Tom Ferry has some great scripts in there too. Uh, you know, we have our map scripts as well. We just scripts all day long and you need to get to practice those just to make sure you have those confidence and then you always have to have stuff ready to go, right? How's the market today? What are you saying? Velma, what are you saying? It is great. Oh, is it great though? Is it great for a buyer? Is it great for a seller? You know, so that could be something where, hey, if it's great, that's going to work for about 80% of the people, right? They're going to say, oh, that's good. Well, great for who? Sell side? Why is it, Calvin, why is it great on the, the buy side? Well, it's, uh, of course, uh, depending, uh, depending on uh, what kind of client you're looking, I mean, talking to the buyer sure. or a seller, of course, like the seller is great. You know? Uh, it's a it's a seller's market if you want to put your uh, the, um, your house in the in the market it's um it, it is a it's a pretty good time right now yeah that's that's good if it's, a, if it's a buyer you know interest rate looks like you know like a couple of months ago uh, they, they jump up a little bit more so you know if you're looking still looking for a low interest rate it's still a good market to you know purchase Compared to maybe three years ago, nobody can predict what happened. If it's uh, one point um, one percent higher compared to this year, um, you know your monthly payment might jump. I don't know, five hundred dollars, depending on the the price of the uh, the house. So it's it's still good for the buyer as well. So yeah. okay, so if you writ if you written that down or you recorded yourself saying that, and then you had to repeat it back to me, could you do it smoother and it with more confidence on everything? Right, right, definitely. If you talk to a client properly, you might have pays a lot more uh, slower. Yeah, absolutely. So here's right. the thing is that's why the scripts practice is to make sure that when you're delivering the goods, you got to make sure you do it with confidence, right? And you have to, 
and if you're meeting somebody new, you got to come with a nice, strong, hey, some facts about the market that, you know, helps out. You know, just, they have to make sure that in the first 30 seconds, you know, they're going to say, hey, is this guy that I, somebody I want to work with or, you know, is it, maybe not. So, you know, if somebody asks me, they can help the market. It might depend on what side you're on. It might, oh, I'm on the sell side. I'm like, this, on the sell side, it's fantastic. Right now, we're getting anywhere from nine to 10 offers over list price. But that's not the key that you should look at because any person in today's market is looking to, can help you sell your house. But the problem is you got to make sure you have somebody like me that can negotiate the terms because you could have somebody offering 50,000 over list price, 100,000 over list price with no uh, appraisal contingency or not appraisal contingency, but without you know appraisal gap. Or if they do have an appraisal contingency in there, you're pretty much not getting anything. But what we do is we make sure you maximize the amount of money. I'm like, what do you charge? And you tell them like, hey, it doesn't matter what I charge it. Only thing that matters today is how much you actually net. Cause you can go get a discount agent and net less. Did you really win? No, you didn't. You lost, you left money on the table. So you have to be able to, to have those kind of conversations and it has to roll off your tongue very smoothly on that. So it's uh, yeah. Right. So totally things, agree. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to make sure you have those conversations and you can have those conversations in, uh, in Porsche as well. Hey, why should I buy a Porsche today? And I'm like, the reason you should buy a Porsche today, because we have a chip shortage. I said, the car you buy today, maybe worth more money next year. You know, it's like, really? Yeah. And you shouldn't look at the GT3 RS. You should look at this GT2, GT2 RS. Why? Because it has better packages that you can get. You get those magnesium wheels, right? Yeah, looks like you know your cars. <laughs> yeah, I know absolutely. I know my horses, I know my cars. So yeah, so you're like, why are the magnesium wheels better? And I said, hey, you know what? They're lighter. They're about X amount of kilograms lighter. And why does that even matter? It's like, hey, the worst case scenario, you're saving the environment. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yep. <laughs> I usually I approach the uh, you know the uh, the client slightly differently. You know, usually I um, get to know my client first I have a lot of questions you know uh, you know before I tell them some information because are you trying to tailor a certain type of the service or tailor a certain type of the vehicle for the customer um, so usually I I ask questions first and see what type of the vehicle you're looking for and what kind of style uh, they drive the car and you know how many people are usually in the car so in that case a few questions i know you know is it going to be uh what type of uh, a driver they are so i can tailor certain um you know car for them yeah and of course the financing term on the other term as well yeah yeah absolutely it's the same thing with real estate too it's like hey i'm not going to sell you a two-story home if you have bad knees because you can't go up the stairs right so you have to identify what they're looking for and see what price range they're in and make sure you know they're qualified to be able to show them so and that's where you make sure you get all those stuffs out early on so you know exactly what you're working for you set those ex expectations up so you know those scripts they help out a lot it may sound dumb practicing them if you say it in the mirror it's even better if the really cool part is is do it in the in a video that only you can see then replay it you know that's going to help you out. at least you can see oh oh i i don't know if i'd even buy a house from me because i'm looking at myself in there so you know it Make sure it's all nice and confident, you know, be able to get it done. So it's it's how it is, you know, and you got the role playing scripts that you could do. You want me to say, hey, you know, you should get a role playing partner. I do have a role playing partner, but I just don't do it as often as I need to. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it helps out because the last thing you need to do is get in a situation where you don't know what you're doing. You may know, you may formulate it, but you don't know. Like, hey, I was like, what is, you know, I was like, where's the market going tomorrow? I'm like, uh, I don't know. I guess up. I'm like, all right, that's cool. That sounds very confident. So where's, where's the market going tomorrow or the next month? I'm like, hey, what we're seeing is last year, we did see a 22% uh, raise in the market price. But this year, we're still going to see market demand is still high on the buyer side. So we're probably looking anywhere from 12 to 15. We're still really good. A little bit lower than that 22%. That's just an anomaly. You just can't have that. It's just, it's unsustainable. But on the buy side, we're going to be moving up. So if you buy today, there's a good chance that you're going to have great appreciation over the next year, two years, three years, because the building, the, what's it? So the inventory is low and that's going to sustain growth. I'm like, oh, that's good. 
but what about all the people moving out of California into Nevada? I'm like, no, you have nice millennials that are buying, you know, they're going to buy up that gap with the people moving out. So be able to have some kind of script like that. And I was on the fly stuff. So it's like, be able to have something like that and maybe role play something in case that scenario comes up. But, you know, you want to make sure you're in the right spot at the right time. All right. So they got this thing, the do not call list, right? So uh, I want to say it's what, $40,000 per offense. So if you buy some kind of, uh, you can buy something like something from Red X. Uh, I think they scrub all those do not call list stuff so you can call them. But when you're calling people, make sure you know they're not on the do not call list. Um, and if you do call somebody and somebody answers the phone, hey, I'm on a do not call list. Don't sit there and argue. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I was like, and then hang up, right? Because you don't want to get in an argument with them. I'm like, the next thing you know is you get a call and say, hey, this guy called. But what do you know? He got 10 offenses today. Not good. So just to make sure. And then if somebody, you have to look at your California rules because they may be a little different than Nevada rules, but you know, make sure you know exactly what those rules are. So you're not, uh, not getting in trouble, like to keep your money home. Does everybody understand that? You don't call the do not call list? Yeah, we just don't. All right, so. I think, uh, yeah, so we're on the last two parts of it. So make sure you're updating your contacts and you follow up. Follow up is probably key. It's like the most important thing. I think a lot of agents fail in that part. You know, people are always looking at, like me, I was at that point where all I was looking at is, hey, can I get new leads, new leads, new leads, new leads, new leads. Reality is your leads are already in there. You just need to follow up. And just say, hey, you know what? I don't know who to call. I'm like, you have a phone. The phone's right here. I say just go through the list of people in your phone. Just literally go through and like, but you got to come, you know, a little purposeful. You know, you can't be calling. I'm like, hey, John, I hadn't talked to you in five years, but hey, do anyone that's looking to buy or sell a house? You know, just something like that. So what I've been doing on people I haven't reached out for a long time, and I'll I'll send them a message and saying, uh, hey, is this still, you know, is this still your current number, John? This is Al from Keller Williams. And if they respond back, hey, yeah, it is. I'm like, cool. Because I had your number in here and I got a new phone. I just wanted to make sure I still had your contact information in case I ever come across a good deal and I could let you know about it. Oh, you got good deals? I got good deals all day long. What are you looking for? You know, create some kind of something like that. Yeah, it's kind of cheesy, but hey, it still works, right? At the end of the day, just be able to get some business done. So follow up, make sure everybody's still using the same contact uh, information, update if you need to, have it in your phone or have it in your phone that crosses over into command. There is a, there is something that can uh, connect those two together. So it could be inside of your, uh, inside of command as well. Um, man, I wish I could do a command class for you guys too and just show you the things you could be doing inside of command. Uh, command is very powerful. Yeah, so you, we've already hashed on this. Just make sure you know exactly what the, you know, what, what the contract looks like. Yeah, just you have to make sure you understand it because you're going to have to explain it to somebody. You can have somebody that's pretty savvy and understand what they're looking at, but then you're going to have people that's first-time home buyers. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Yeah, what is this? What is that question? What is that question? You know, it's... We never know because I had like 16 questions the other day on the contract we wrote with uh, my clients buying a home for the first time. Finally moving out of his parents' home, which is fantastic at 40. You should... <laughs> so yeah, he's a good guy. We're waiting for him to see if we get an answer on his, uh, um, his house as well. So we'll see. All right. Like literally the last thing that's on here, I think. No, there's still one more thing after this. I tell you, this thing keeps going. So command, make sure you get help. You can get in there. There's questions and answers inside of there. There is a command group that you can look for inside of Facebook as well. I just look for KW command and I'd be part of that group. And you can ask questions if you need to and be able to know where you can find it. And then there's KW connect. Make sure you'll be able to grab into KW connect. Pretty easy to define. And then if you have any great ideas, you can put ideas.kw.com um 
and just have everybody vote it up because they're really just really working to make sure it's nice and smooth for us and create your success list. Now, we've already talked about this. You know, you guys need to do what you got to do. You've already learned what you need to do. Just got to go out there and do it. And nobody's going to keep you accountable other than yourself and your accountability partner. So make sure you guys go out there and do something, right? You can't just float around and do real estate unless you're just doing it for yourself, buying and flipping properties for yourself. Then, you know, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> it's just, you know, we're in here to, to make sure we're, we're doing good. So... Yeah, so that's the end of our class. Um, hopefully you guys learned something, at least something. Hopefully that was enjoyable, somewhat enjoyable. Yes, thank you so much. We learned a lot from you. Um, I do have some, I'm not a tech person. I do have a, a, <laughs> a question about the, um, the tech stuff. Uh, so I have uh, regarding the, the, the MRS, right? So yeah, I go have, ahead. Oh, I have an old MacBook uh, Air that I had. I purchased about six years ago. Okay, it's, it's still doable. But right. I, someone told me that you know, um, for MIS or real estate, most likely the PC is better. Um, uh, is that is that uh, true or? Uh, I don't think so. I I was a piece. I was a Microsoft engineer early in life, and you know, I switched over in. 2012 into just using pure Mac. I haven't had any issues other than this PowerPoint. Outside of that, everything else has been really, uh, you know, really easy. It just, okay. you know, I, I haven't had any problems where nothing worked. Early in life, there was a section where it didn't work. <coughs> um, it was something to do with the, uh, yeah, it was something with our MLS. Well, that was in 2012, but all that stuff has all been fixed now. Okay, so both I I don't need to upgrade my my computer, but it's the no, I think so. I have an old one too, and it was really funny. I was going to bring my old one today just as a backup in case this one didn't work. But I have the same exact MacBook Air, and honestly, if I wasn't doing any video rendering, I'd probably still be using it because it still works great. And you don't really need a powerful machine unless you're doing some kind of video editing, like 4K editing. I don't think so. Yeah, it, it still looks fine to me so far. So <laughs> I don't know. So in that case, I'm going to keep it until it, it breaks then. Yeah, absolutely. Until you can afford it, go ahead, because you're going to need some write-offs. Right, right, right. Yep. In the future. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So anyway, so any other questions, concern, I just posted. I'm like, hey, you guys can add me on Facebook uh, because after today, you guys will forget about me. And then you're like, oh, yeah, I don't remember that guy. But if you add me, you know, at least you'll still be entertained somehow and maybe catch one or two of my uh, my good stuff that I post. You know, I post a lot of sports related stuff, not a lot of sports related stuff, but a lot of motivational stuff. And this pretty much what I see in the market sometimes. And that's another thing in social media, like I taught in that class about a year and a half ago, is you can't always just post business, 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 business on your um on your facebook account because all that's going to do is going to turn people off I'm like no i really don't really care what they're saying every day right so it's a nice collection of everything people really want to see you're a real person and you know they really want to see what what you're doing in life how do we find you oh i just posted inside of uh the chat group but it's alby vass on uh pretty much all social media so so it's a l b i e space V as in Vegas, AS. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, I'll be Thank question. you, Albie. Oh, no, somebody thanks. had a question. Yes, who has a question? question. Uh, how is the market in Las Vegas right now? Oh, it's great. No, see, that's not the answer you want to give, right? <laughs> well, I just wanted to find out, you know, because if somebody wants to invest. Yeah, absolutely. So any property in Las Vegas and just wanted to maybe do Airbnb or something. Yeah, like absolutely. That. So the market in general is really hot still. So we're, we're looking at a really shortage of uh, inventory. It has grown a little bit. So there are a little bit of vulnerability to be able to get into a house, depends on the price. So we do notice anything under 400,000. Yeah, we know we have houses for under 400,000. So those you're looking at 10 to 15, 20 offers on it. It's pretty rough out there. Uh, but in that 450 to 550, 
there are some houses that sit on the market 10 days plus, but less than 20, but the good ones go very quickly with multiple offers. And so happened. My client loves all the good ones. So that's why we keep losing. Um, I think we were 20 grand short on the last one that we didn't win, but we're waiting to, she said we were going to win this one because we picked a house that was 19 days on market. And I'm like, don't lie to me. You don't have any other offers. Take our offer. We're going to give you list and call it a day and open escrow. And we're still waiting. Like she's waiting for some magical number to show up. So uh, yeah, and Airbnb is really rough here. So let me tell you guys, it's, it's really hard to do an Airbnb here because the casinos are our main source of business, right? So if you're staying in Airbnb, they don't want you uh, staying there because you're not spending money inside the casino. So they made it really tough to actually stay in Airbnb or create an Airbnb in the city. And even they gave you sections of the town where you can create an Airbnb, but once you buy it, you have to get a new license. They're just not renewing it. So it doesn't make sense. If you want to do Airbnb or some kind of nightly rental, your best bet is looking at, at Palm Towers. Um, it's not great because the Palm's not open anymore, but the MGM signature is your best bet. Not a lot of money is going to be generated there, but at least if it's for you and you want to be in there like three, four or five nights a year and it's rented the rest of the time, it's, you know, it's probably a better option, but not a lot of money in there. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So I wish I would have saw your guys' faces because all I get is a whole bunch of squares with names. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Albie, we want to thank you so very much. Always bring great energy and fantastic knowledge. We cannot wait until you can visit in person. So uh, let's hope this Rona goes away as fast as possible so that we can all get back together. Absolutely. And, you know, and I love your office too. And it's just, man, I really wish I was going to be there. And I'm like, ah, you know, I was trying to make sure it was time to ride with the 49ers of win-win. I don't know, maybe... <laughs> Well, well, we'll have a better understanding after Thanksgiving to see where this run is at. So maybe, hopefully some playoff hey, time. Shoot, I don't even know if we're going to make the playoffs. <laughs> today might have been a great day to go to the blue versus orange uh, game uh, for game five, right? Yeah, I know. I got to get ready. So I ain't going to lie. I'm actually going to go grab some pizza because it's, it's do or die <laughs> it's for both time. of us. Yeah. Great. Thanks again. We really, really appreciate it. You guys follow Albie online. It's always entertaining and always informational. Uh, I'm sure you'll see him very, very active in some of those Facebook groups that he mentioned. And uh, thanks again, buddy. We really, really appreciate it and hope to see you soon uh, in real life. Yeah, Take absolutely. care. Let us absolutely. know if we so, can do anything for you. Yeah. And the next command class uh, here, I'm, I'll ask if we can uh, let you guys in and I'll send you a link. You guys can jump in. Awesome. Oh, yeah, so we appreciate we'll, we'll, that. We'll are you teaching? If we're, I guess to see how many uh, people we could actually have. <laughs> yeah, are you teaching um, uh, command classes in your market center? Uh, like once a month. Oh, okay, awesome. We'd love to hear one of your classes for sure. Yeah, once a month. Once a month. Um, because I can't be on the ALC because it's a lot of work. Um, so to give back to the office, I'll do a I'll do a class uh, a tech class once a month. Um, very so we nice yeah we do different things uh last month we did mls even though you know oh seasoned agents oh i know the mls but no there's some hidden stuff in the mls it's just like wow i could be doing better in business just by understanding you some of the small business. stay learning based we can always all be doing better constantly if you're not Absolutely. learning based you're not you're not moving forward thanks again buddy take care Absolutely. bye thank you guys ciao